from top to bottom, and that's where all the buzz is right now. Obviously, you're talking about the conference coming off of a national championship. You're talking about the fact that it's the best group of college basketball head coaches, I feel, and we all feel in the nation. And then you throw in all of the other buzz, knowing that this is going to be several teams in the top 25 and several teams in the NCAA tournament. I mean, there's no shortage of, of storylines here. We've, we've got Providence coming in with the new coach. We've got Rick Pitino with the new emergence of St. John's new era here. We've got Marquette coming back with all their players back. UConn, the repeat national championship they're trying to attain. I don't know where to start, but I'm excited. And we can't forget about Creighton as well. There's a lot to talk about today. We'll get to the preseason poll, but how about the fact that the reigning national champions, the UConn Huskies, are third they're number three in the preseason poll with Marquette and Creighton topping it. Plenty to get to, but first let's head to the Hall of Famer, John Paquette, who starts the day. So if you notice, after the interview stop. Can we get the audio here? Okay, we're good. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Big East Basketball Media Day. We have a great crowd tonight, or this morning. People are still coming in, uh, easily our biggest crowd in over 10 years. I'm John Paquette from the Big East Conference. If there's anything anybody from the Big East can do for you, please let us know. I'll, I'll explain the schedule uh, quickly. Uh, after some opening remarks from Val, we'll have our interview sessions and we'll have uh, the TVs um, are, are in groups of three. Our teams will move into the TV area. Everybody else will be behind us at the team tables. And before our interview sessions begin, um, and we'll also have a photo with Val and our head coaches after her remarks. But to start our day, we have a short video for you. It's been a decade since the Big East Conference went all in on its roots, basketball. And what a decade it's been. Let's assess the state of this league. If national championships are your barometer, they've got that covered, accounting for three of the last seven crowns in the sport. If tradition is what you're looking for, how about college basketball's longest running conference postseason tournament held at the same venue? The Big East Tournament has been housed inside Madison Square Garden since 1983. If you're looking for coaches, that's been the theme for this league from its infancy. So much so that you can refer to those Titans by their first names. John, Jim, Louie, Rowling, and in this iteration of the conference, the Hall of Famer, Jay. Today, that still rings true from one of those Hall of Famers who now returns to this league, to coaches who have led historic March Madness runs, to figures that have become synonymous with the league's identity, to veteran winners, to rising stars, to the coach of the defending national champions. This fraternity speaks for itself. And as for the star power in the last 10 years, you're talking about National Players of the Year, high NBA draft picks, all American caliber talent. This is the Big East. In a world of college athletics that is ever changing, this league knows its DNA and who it wants to be. The premier hoops conference, and one that is thriving, heading into a season as anticipated as any that we've seen. Thank you. And for some opening remarks, our Commissioner Val Ackerman. Great. Thanks so much, John. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Media Day for the uh, Big East Conference, proud home of the 2023 NCAA Men's Basketball National Champion. Uh, Coach Hurley, I suspect hearing that doesn't get very old for you. 
I uh, want to start off by thanking uh, all of the uh, print and electronic journalists who are in the building. We have a number of special guests here today. Thanks for coming out. Um, and I uh, want to let all of our journalists know how much we appreciate greatly your, uh, your coverage of the conference, especially those of you who've been on the Big East for a long time. We know we have a number of you in the House. Uh, we, we truly value our relationships uh, with all of you, and as John noted, we're at your service today and will be throughout the season. Um, my remarks and the show that follows today, which will run throughout the day, uh, will be coming to viewers at home uh, as part of a special edition of our Shoot Around show on the Big East Digital Network, hosted by John Fanta. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Uh, proud Seton Hall alum and voice of the Big East, who's joined by Vin Parisi and uh, proud St. John's alum, uh, Tariq Turner. Um, our spirits today are dampened by the news that Georgetown head women's basketball coach Tasha Butts passed away on Sunday night following a heroic battle against breast cancer. Coach Butts joined the Hoyas in April and was beginning to make her mark on the hilltop when she learned earlier this fall about the recurrence of this terrible disease. I'm going to be making some additional comments about Coach Butts in my women's basketball remarks later today. We extend our deepest sympathies to her family and the Georgetown community, and I would ask for a moment of silence in her memory. Thank you. We have some distinguished newcomers to the conference this year, and I want to publicly uh, welcome all of them to our ranks. First, Kim English joins us as the new head men's basketball coach at Providence. Kim is a rising star uh, in college basketball who comes to the Big East following two years at George Mason. We're also very happy to welcome back to the Big East Rick Pitino, who's hit the ground running at St. John's and whose list of Hall of Fame uh, credentials uh, are, of course, too, too numerous to list. Kim and Rick uh, are joining an outstanding coaching fraternity, and we know that they'll uh, only elevate the already high caliber of play in our league. We also look forward to working with Big East stalwart Ed Cooley as he takes over the head coaching reins at Georgetown. On the women's side, I want to welcome Aaron Bath, new head women's basketball coach at Providence, who was a college standout at Clemson and whose coaching career included stops at Michigan and NC State, and Billy Chambers, new head women's coach at Xavier, who's a familiar name to the New Yorkers here following her successful 10-year stint at Iona. Georgetown interim head coach Darnell Haney is also with us today. Uh, I want to commend, as I always do, the ADs from our 11 schools, all of whom are here today. Uh, it's an amazing group of colleagues. They're the best in the business at what they do. And I want to thank them for everything they do to support their athletes and the traditions and high standards of the Big East and uh, their schools. I want to give a special thanks for uh, heavy lifting to Butler's Barry Collier, who serves on the NCAA Men's Basketball Committee, Villanova's Mark Jackson, who's our representative on the NCAA Council, and Coach Cooley, who serves as a coach representative on the Men's Basketball Oversight Committee. We're also very excited that Dan Leibovitz has joined this conference office as Senior Associate Commissioner for Men's Basketball following seven years in a similar capacity at the SEC. Dan brings tremendous experience and a coach's eye to his new role, and we know he's going to play a valuable role together with our Associate Commissioner and Master Scheduler, Mike Coyne, as we look to keep the Big East in the top tier of college basketball. We, of course, want to thank Stu Jackson for all his contributions to the conference over the past nine years, and we wish him well at the West Coast Conference, except when any of his schools go up against the Big East. I want to recognize John Cow, our men's basketball supervisor of officials, who joined the conference back in 2013 when all of this was getting going after 40 years on the floor as a top NCAA official. John does a superb job managing our, what we think is best in class, men's basketball officiating program, which now remains part of an 11-conference consortium that we co-run with the ACC. We have a phenomenal staff at the conference office, led by Vince Nicastro, our highly capable and can-do deputy commissioner, 
and I want to publicly thank all of my staff uh, who are here today for everything they do to support the Big East in our schools. We are thrilled to be here in person uh, at the world's most famous arena, and we always look forward to this day because it signals the start of what we know will be another memorable year of competition for our men's and women's basketball programs. I want to thank MSG Chairman Jim Dolan and Joel Fisher, EVP of Marquee Events, who's here, as well as his terrific team, led by Sal Frederico and Larry Torres, for the hospitality today, thanks very much, and more than that, for our long-standing working relationship as we look ahead to the 42nd edition of the Big East Tournament starting on March 13th of next year. Ten years ago, we did not know what to expect with the conference's new alignment and were, very heart and were heartened uh, and very happy when 15,000-plus fans came out to see Creighton take on Providence in the 2014 title game. We haven't looked back. The tournament quickly returned to its historic sellout attendance levels and has remained a sports staple here in the Big Apple. We believe the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden is the best event of its kind in college basketball. And I'm pleased to report that Joel and I have begun discussions about an extension to our arrangement that would keep the Big East here at the world's most famous arena for, at minimum, our 50th anniversary in 2032, and Joel and I both hope for many more years beyond. We couldn't be prouder about our relationship with Fox Sports, now in its 11th year. The new Big East and FS1 came into being together in the summer of 2013, and I can say without qualification that the success that we've enjoyed is attributable in large measure to the partnership and the spirit of collaboration that we've shared with Fox Sports at every step of the way over the past decade and at all levels of our organizations. I want to recognize and thank Executive Vice President Jordan Bazant, who's bringing tremendous energy and an innovative mindset to his role, and who's joined here today by Derek Crocker, Steve Shear, and I believe the one and only Bill Raftery. They are all fantastic colleagues who are providing exceptional support and camaraderie to the conference and our schools. It's our hope and expectation that this one-of-a-kind relationship will continue well into the future and to that end, we've retained Allen and Company to assist us in our upcoming media rights negotiations this winter. I want to thank Jeep, who's going to be returning for the ninth year as presenting sponsor of all 22 biggest championships and continues to provide outstanding support around our men's tournament here at the Garden, our women's tournament at Mohegan Sun Arena, and all of our athletes, coaches, and programs throughout the year. We're also pleased to announce that Invesco QQQ recently signed on as presenting sponsor of the Big East Digital Network, as well as title sponsor of our Men's and Women's Basketball Coach of the Year Awards. We're very grateful for their pledge of support also. What a finish we had last year, capped off by UConn's decisive victory in the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship game to capture its fifth NCAA crown which ties the Huskies for fourth place all time in the number of titles won by a single college program. Congratulations again to President Radenka Merrick, Dave Benedict, Coach Hurley and his staff, and the Husky players for this tremendous accomplishment. We also saw Creighton reach the Elite Eight and fall just short of a Final Four berth. Xavier made it to the Sweet 16, and Marquette and Providence both earned bids. Marquette was ably guided to both Big East regular season and tournament crowns by Coach Shaka Smart, the Big East Coach of the Year, who was also named National Coach of the Year by AP, the U.S. Basketball Writers Association, and the NABC. Great work, Coach Smart. Fast forward, and here we are with the 11th season of the new Big East upon us. I think so often about the first few years after this group of schools came together in 2013 after the old Big East disintegrated, and I think about the skepticism that faced us, and then the effort, the effort that it took on the part of many people, some still here today, to resuscitate the conference and prove that our schools were ready and able to keep competing for national titles in basketball. I remember standing in front of the journalists at our first media day, which we held over at Chelsea Piers in the fall of 2013, 
attempting to be optimistic, not really knowing. Um, and I'm here today um, truly excited, even more excited, in fact, uh, about the coming year and also very proud about what our schools have accomplished since those early years. I can't say we're unconcerned about what the future has in store for college sports and what that may mean for us, but we think we've put the conference in the best possible position to remain relevant and successful come what may. We've enjoyed reading the banter about who's the best basketball conference in the country, and not surprisingly, I'm going to side with our coaches on this one. Here are the facts. The Big East has won three of the last seven national crowns, and we've been in three of the last four Final Fours. Only the ACC has matched our title count in the past decade. Ten of our 11 schools have appeared in the NCAA tournament in the past 10 years. Starting with a zero base, the, N the Big East has earned 96 NCAA men's basketball units over the past nine tournaments played, or an average of just under 11 units per year. We lay claim to the best coaches in the country. We have a Hall of Famer in our midst in Coach Patino, and our top seven coaches in career win count have won in the aggregate 3,211 games. That averages out to 458 wins per those seven guys. Seven of our coaches have been to the Elite Eight, and four have reached the Final Four. As I've noted, we play our conference tournament in the biggest city in the country to sell out crowds in what's widely seen as the most prestigious basketball arena in the world. Six of our schools are in or near nine of the country's biggest media markets. Another's in the top 25, and two more in the top 38. The urban nature and reach of our schools is a plus, and it's a key part of our identity. Thanks to our partners at Fox Sports, the Big East has the best men's basketball coverage of any conference in the country. This year's schedule will again feature wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the Fox family of linear networks, including 194 games on Fox, Fox Sports 1, and Fox Sports 2. Our 24 games on Big Fox and another four games on CBS give us the most broadcast coverage in our history and more than any other conference. CBS Sports is also carrying 19 games. On that score, we also want to acknowledge our CBS colleagues for their efforts on our behalf. Dan Weinberg, Bess Barnes, and Mario Brady are here, and we want to commend them for the ex exceptional job they do as well with their NCAA March Madness coverage in the spring. To round out the season, FS1 will again carry complete coverage of the Big East Tournament here in March and the first semifinal on Friday the 15th and our championship game on Saturday, March 16th, will both air on the Fox Broadcast Network. We believe that what we have by way of geographic footprint and competitive format is an advantage. Being in only two regions means saner travel for our basketball teams and athletes across all of our sports, especially if schedules have them playing two or occasionally three games a week during the season. Any coach here is going to tell you that wear and tear during the Big East season is real, and our makeup gives our basketball student athletes the best chance to perform at their best and keep some gas in the tank for March Madness if their teams advance. Our member count has also allowed us to hold on to a double round robin competitive format, which is the best way to stoke rivalries and is by far the fairest way to put together a basketball schedule. Just ask any coach or administrator. It's also the most effective way to help prepare our teams for the NCAA tournament. Let's not forget that UConn finished fourth last year in the Big East regular season. I think Coach Hurley would agree that the grind probably helped the Huskies in the end. We believe these sorts of benefits will be lessened or lost with the unbalanced basketball schedules that the newly enlarged conferences will be left with. And while not every school can finish in first place or in the top half of the conference standings, every single one of our schools is invested in the sport. It's simply easier for us to double down on basketball without football distractions on our campuses or in our conference meeting room. The basketball practice facilities projects now underway at DePaul and, Saint and Seton Hall are the most recent proof of our collective commitment and follow a long line of upgrades at other Big East schools over the past 10 years. 
Finally, we believe our school's been second to none in our advocacy work around diversity, inclusion, and racial and gender equity in the sports industry. In a fraught world, we think sports remain one of the most powerful ways of inspiring hope and bringing people together in peaceful and healthy ways. For that reason, we're continuing our Be the Change advocacy platform this year with that slogan to be stitched onto all Big East basketball uniforms again this season. You can cast your own votes on who's the best basketball conference, just like we've cast ours. One thing is for sure, if college basketball today has a soul, you'll find it in our league. Nationally, the list of complex issues before the college sports world remains dizzying. In the interest of time, I'll only touch on NIL uh, in these remarks. Um, while the Big East fully supports the opportunities that are now available to our athletes to exploit their name, image, and likenesses, and a significant number of our basketball players and other athletes have done just that, the absence of a uniform national standard and the variations from state to state on how NIL is regulated has made the administration inconsistent, often confusing, and with the potential for adverse consequences to the athletes, which is a negative. I recently chaired the NCA committee that came up with a package of measures designed to protect athletes from NIL abuses. The package includes agent registration, deal disclosure, standardized contract provisions, and stepped up education by schools as athletes navigate the complexities of the NIL marketplace. That said, we share the position of NCA President Charlie Baker and other conferences that our system would benefit from a set of national rules that preempts the state patchwork of state laws now in effect and reconciles the application of the antitrust and labor laws in Title IX to college sports programs, especially in the collectives environment. More work also needs to be done to address the challenge of enforcing rules that prohibit NIL as a recruiting inducement for prospects and transfers and to figure out the permissible boundaries of institutional involvement with NIL activities. We applaud the efforts of the Transformation Committee last year to get at some of the tough issues. Xavier A.D. Greg Christopher was part of that group, but it seems unlikely to us that the necessary clarifications could take place at this point without some level of congressional intervention. I want to thank the presidents of our 11 schools, led by Creighton President Father Daniel Hendrickson, who serves as our Big East board chair for their leadership and their guidance as we try to stay nimble in shifting terrain and serve the interests of the 4,100 athletes on 200 teams who now participate in the Big East across our 22 sports. I want to close by commending our players for the way they represent their schools, the conference, and themselves on the court and on their campuses. We are very, very proud to have all of you in the Big East, and we wish you the very best of luck this year. We hope to see everybody during the season. Thanks again for coming today. And John, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thanks, everybody. And there she is, the Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman announcing just moments ago that the conference is currently in talks with Madison Square Garden to extend the Big East Tournament through at least its 50th year, which would be 2032, the Big East Tournament held inside this building every year since 1983. Welcome back to our set. John Fanta here with all of you. Vin Parisi's here. Tyree Turner is here. So, gentlemen, let's talk about the preseason honors, right? Preseason Player of the Year is the reigning Player of the Year in this conference, Tyler Kolick of Marquette. I think he's the best point guard in the country, and he does a little bit of everything really well for his Marquette team. And he just really just led that team in terms of playmaking, the ability to score the ball, and his leadership on and off the court has really transformed that program. And Shaka Smart certainly happy to have him back as that leader of that Marquette team. Yeah, truly remarkable what he did from beginning to end. And it, it, when he had to shoot it, when he had to score it, when he had to playmake, when he had to make his teammates better, and control the tempo of a basketball game. And what's a good thing for Shaka as well is how many returners are now surrounding Tyler coming back this year as well. From a 29 win Marquette team, let's turn to the preseason freshman of the year. This kid is really talented, dynamic guard. He's a UConn Husky, Stefan Castle. 
What do you see in his potential, Tariq? Well, you said it, dynamic. He's 6'6", he gets to the rim, he sees the floor, athletic. He is the kind of guy that can transform a program because he can create shots for himself and his teammates. He rebounds, he can guard one through four, and he's physically already a man even though he's just a freshman. Yeah, and listen, you're going to hear a lot of buzz throughout the season about, oh, is he a one and done? Is he Because he was top 10. I think he was ranked yeah. ninth coming out. But I think the biggest key to this kid is what Tariq just mentioned. It's the word versatility. The way college basketball is right now and the way this league is structured right now, when you have offensive production, offensive talent, but you got a kid that could guard three or four positions out there on the floor, that's a stud. Let's talk about the reigning national champions the Connecticut Huskies their fifth title yeah. since 1999 yeah they're five for five in national championship games the way that they dominated they won their six NCAA tournament games by an average of 20 points per contest how did they cut down the nets in such dominant fashion well it's funny I remember being up in Albany for the first round when coach Patino and the Iona Gales were up there and yeah. You know, they gave them they gave them a game the first 20 minutes at halftime and then literally every half of basketball after that throughout the regular tournament, uh, it was still statistical domination. I, I think it just came down to the fact that right mix of kids. He did a tremendous job with this group, but they literally checked every box. They had size, they had guard play, they had shooting, they had did the heck out of the basketball. I remember mid-season they kind of hit a rut and yep. Coach Hurley had some issues with the officials. He was getting technicals and it was a little bit of, I don't want to say turmoil, but a little bit of kind of uncertainty on how good this team was. And then they just slowly peaked. They got to February, they started to get better. And I think the biggest thing you touched on, Vin, is everybody knew their role and they were stars in their role. Andre Jackson, Jordan Hawkins, you know, Caravan, uh, Sonogo this year for a breakout year was dominant in the paint. They all excelled in their roles and Danny Hurley had the perfect mix of guys. Good, po good point that I think it was yep. Yes, it was. They had coach. They really, uh, you, you know, got banged around. But I think that's the, one of the best examples in recent years of a team playing well all time. The way they were playing talking with Shaka at the Big East tournament, even though Mark was the favorite to win the Big East tournament that week. Now they didn't, but favorite in Vegas, and that's how good they played the home stretch the last couple of weeks of the year. Not just a matter of moments, but I think that trends up because you're talking about a team. How many times have you seen a national champion with multiple stars yeah. and they're third in the Big East preseason poll. Well, it's a testament to how good the league is, one. It's also a testament that they lost two guys that are in the pros now. They lost Jordan Hawkins, who's with the New Orleans Hornets, and they lost Trey uh, Jackson, who's now with the Milwaukee Bucks. So that is a little bit of a drop-off, if you want, Will, in terms of experience. The change is they brought in a really good group of young freshmen that are just as talented, but they're freshmen, so they're gonna to have to learn those ups and downs of what it's like to transition to college. Yeah, I mean, think about what he lost, but yet what he still returns and what he's yeah. bringing in. In this day and age of college hoops with the portal, you don't see that combination often. Let's take a look at the preseason all-conference teams. Now, when you look at the Creighton Blue Jays, who are in that second position in the Big East preseason, Paul, this is why Trey Alexander and Ryan Kalkbrenner, Tyreek, are as talented as your Trey Alexander might be the best two-way player in the league. Versatile defender. He's improved his three-point before. He's the kind of guy that can go through Kalkbrenner, who's the best rim protector we have in the league, can take better leaders of this team, upperclassmen. They know what to expect in the Big East, and they're going to be ready for the challenge. But remember, this team was one play away from the Final Four. That's right. And obviously, they lose Nemhart to Gonzaga, but Trey and Ryan are two of the biggest reasons why they could have such a successful season. Let's tip the day off in fitting fashion with the head coach of the reigning national champions. Dan Hurley is with us. Coach, happy media day. Happy media day. <laughs> <laughs> 
just talking about the pieces and Tariq and Vin both said the way that they went about dominating the NCAA tournament is in a class of its own an average of 20 points per victory over those six wins what do you see in this season's group well you know yesterday at the Excel Center of practice I didn't see that um, <laughs> when Tar when I knew you were going to open up optimistic <laughs> Vin, you know my deal. Uh, when Tariq was there to see the boys, you know, it did not look like March or April. Um, but we also didn't look like that, you know, at this time, yeah. uh, you know, last year. The group's got great potential this year. Obviously, a, a healthy Donovan Klingon, who has a chance to be, uh, you know, a dominant player for us, not just a really good player or even a great player, but a dominant player that changes things. Both in two, and three. And then what we have with Sam Samson Johnson at center. So we have the potential to have that one-two punch at center. You know, we've got shooting up and down the roster. Um, we've got veteran guards. It's gonna come down to, I think, our bench and whether uh, we could bring a very talented group of freshmen along. What's fascinating, Coach, about your team is in this day and age of year to year, how many times we're going to compete. But what's fascinating about you is you lost, you returned so much, and you brought in so much. How, how is your mindset in terms of the off-season workout? Did you attack? Everything came to fruition. I think. Um, for last season, I think we said to ourselves, if everything breaks right, this will be this will be Jordan's last year, this will be Andre's last year, this will be potentially Naheem if he's not a starter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I think we went into it knowing that we needed to bring in a big time freshman class and that we have to be strategic in the portal. Um, you know, we, we've got to rely on on our ability to develop players. We need big jumps from returners, like a Newton, like a Samson Johnson, um, you know, and then our ability to get freshmen ready to play. You referenced the freshman class. Can you share with our viewers and even us, Stefan Castle, the most highly touted guard you brought in this year. I had a chance to see him in your practice. Dynamic, 6'6", six, six, versatile. What do you see from him, from him coming in? Yeah, are very impressive. We haven't had another freshman as physically ready to help. Um, just his size, his strength. Um, you know, he doesn't really have a flaw offensively. You know, I, I think right now it's about uh, you know his ability to stay humble um, and not make a lot of mistakes. Kind of like you know ball security, um, not dying on screens, not get the the ball in like the things that could make a team aspirations lose and struggle those things. so you know we're intentional with not bringing them today not promoting them so much because we want him to stay humble um, because he's got a lot of growth if we're going to compete for another one coach uh, at such a young age, blue blood program, you're probably on your way to the Hall of Fame. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't. <laughs> I'd, I'd be remiss it's if I day. didn't. If I didn't, though, say, because he probably hasn't admitted it to you, how your Hall of Fame eyes this last year. I don't know if you've ever looked at him from the nostrils up. He's really taken his game to the next his, level. Yeah, he's got um, his frame. Call that framework? I mean, what do we call that? <laughs> Phenomenal. Now, is that like a... a, a He's got a stylist now. Is that a yeah, Gucci, yeah. Are those yeah. Gucci frames? I'm still trying to wrap my head around Vin saying to you, I don't know if you've ever looked at John from the nostrils up. I'm going to start looking at everyone. <laughs> from the nostrils up. Take personnel aside. Is there one dynamic with... I say we had that last year at this time. That's something we got to work on. Maybe something X and O wise, non-personnel related. I would just do two things. Um, just the leadership piece. Andre mm -hmm. Jackson was just an old school captain. Like, uh, 
you know, from like, I don't know, the 70s and the 80s, man, in terms what he stood for and, and how he carried himself in game in locker room uh, and then with the boys in the residence hall so uh, that and then the depth uh, what was special about the team last year was you know we went nine deep yeah. and, and could have even gone ten um, and, and there was a lot of quality so when you have guys not show up on you and you got great depth you yeah. can you know mm -hmm. you can win hey coach one thing um, is Tristan Newton, and you guys don't win the ring. You don't win the national championship without him. In that final stretch of games, he stepped up and really delivered when you most needed him. What, what, what does he mean to your team and back as your senior point guard? I mean, two triple doubles, um, it, it, you know, his national championship performance, you know, his performance in the, in the tournament was phenomenal. Um, you know, it's a guy that, that's played in front of 75,000 people yeah. in a big-ass dome, you yeah. know. So, yeah. you know, he's not going to blink in big spots. Um, you know, he needs, uh, just like Caravan and like a Klingon, though, like he can't be the same player he was last year. He's got to be better. He's got to play at an all-conference level. Uh, do and he's got to be willing to accept some of the leadership that Andre, uh, that void there. Before we let Coach go, it was a theme during March Madness. You gave us updates on your forms of art. You've, you've picked up different types of artistry. Yeah. Uh, any updates on that? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm like just presently working on like a, um, uh, a Cape Cod. Where is Tom Moore? Tom Moore's from the Cape. Uh, he's got a house in the Somewhere Cape up there. Or something. Yeah, he's got a house up there. So I'm working on like a Cape uh, Beach. Mm. Like a boat or a pontoon boat or some type of small boats. the deep boat in the sea seats utility man yeah that's it's that's impressive. why dan hurley's a renaissance man coach <laughs> thanks so much for your time this morning got it great to be out here appreciate Let's it send it over coach. to paul frischner who's with a rather large man <laughs> you know john I, I would say you know standing at degree like I'm just completely overmatched here but Donovan it is great to talk to you uh how are you feeling how's everything going for you right and how are you? yeah I'm feeling well um you know just going through a bit of rehab on my foot uh trying to get healthy get back to 100 percent um you know just coming down to any you know any day now where you know start to pick things up um you know it was a great offseason staying in the gym just getting better every day and you know I'm, I'm excited for what this season season's gonna be you're coming off a season where you were an all big national champion and now you come here to Madison Square Garden and you try to run all of that back uh, how exciting was that to be and really take the Connecticut world by storm right yeah I mean you know every, every college and, you know, for me to do it my freshman year is, you know, a blessing. And, you know, I just had a great team and a great, you know, coaching staff that, you know, helped helped us, you know, away. We all put the work in last year and, you know, we all wanted it so badly that, you know, we just came out here and gave it everything we got and, you know, handled us to help, you know, carry those those habits and, you know, just carry the way to do it, you know, to this year's team and, you know, try to show them and, you know, make them understand what it takes to do that. I remember being out in Portland and watching five and kind of thinking to myself how good and getting to talk to Danny Hurley after one of those games and think to myself, this is a Connecticut team that could be very special. And then, of course, you were going to a national championship of all time. When you think back to the early part of the season last year and some of those places that you grew the most individually that led to your season, what were some of those things that you picked up in the non-conference? Yeah, um, I feel like one thing that, you know, my teammates and I, you know, we all just realized what our role our role was. And, you know, for me, you know, the first couple of years, you know, I, just, I knew my role was, you know, going there for, you know, however, however long it is, you know, rebound the ball, pick and roll game, you know, try to finish with some lobs, um, just get the rebound, block shots, you know, all those types of little things. And, you know, that's just... You know, something coach emphasized for me as my role, and you know, I was willing to do whatever it took to help my team win, whether that was five minutes, 20 minutes, no matter what. And I, you know, I just went out there and played every day. So, what's the biggest thing you did in the off season that you felt like to improve your individual game? Yeah, you know, just getting quicker on my feet, um, on the rim. You know, finishing more dominant. You know, post moves. 
you know, trying to expand the three ball, ball a little bit and, you know, just trying to expand my game. Well, Donovan, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking a few minutes today. Best of luck this season. Good to see you soon. Back to you. We'll be right back. You're watching Big East Media Day presented by Invesco QQQ. Fresh warm hot dogs. When I'm not selling hot dogs, I invest in a fund that advances innovations like robotics. Fresh warm hot dogs straight out of my torso. One for you, one for you. Oh, you're a messy one. Cool, right? So cool. <laughs> Anyone can become an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ, a fund that gives you access to NASDAQ 100 innovations. Hot dogs. Before investing, carefully read and consider fund investment objectives, risk charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. At Team Impact, we pair kids who have been sidelined by serious illness and disability with college teams from across the country. It's more than a single day meet and greet or photo opportunity. Our program places kids on a multi year journey, becoming true members of a collegiate athletics team. From signing day we'll put this right here. to game day. I can't describe it. It feels amazing. Team Impact. All in, all together. Welcome back to the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, for our Big East Media Day. The Providence Friars have a new leader. He is one of the rising stars in coaching. It's Kim English, who is joining us now, ready to take over this Providence program and have that wild crowd of Amica Mutual Pavilion behind him. Kim, thanks for taking time this morning. Thanks for having me. As you step foot in Providence on these opening months on the job, we've talked a couple of times, looking at, at this team, looking at the vibes around the community. What have you learned? What are your overarching takeaways about the city of Providence? Well, you know how special of a place it is, how special the college is, and how special our program is and our team is to the the community. I'm meeting the former players, Ernie D, you know, uh, you know, you know, Kevin Stakem, Joe Hassett, just being around our program and getting to know our guys, some of the more current guys, Chris Dunn, David Duke, they're around. They they they, they love the Friars. This the, the fan support is real and um, just really excited for our November six. Yeah, obviously the, the off the court buzz uh, you know speaks for itself uh, these last few months for you. What's been the on the court theme in terms of the qualities of this ball club with your message has been to not just the fan base, but the, to the players about what do you want people saying about Friar basketball? Well, it's, it's I don't really care what people are saying about it. It's more about, you know, where we're going. And uh, I think it's important that our guys are getting closer. They're understanding what we want. But again, you know, we walked into some really good players. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bryce Hopkins, Devin Carter, Corey Floyd, Jaden Pierre, um, it was it was a real treat to quickly discover just mm -hmm. how hard these guys play, how physical they naturally are, and it's important in a league where everyone plays hard and everyone is is, is incredibly mm -hmm. physical. I spent a little time with you, Kim. You got a great personality. People want to be around you. People want to play for you. So my question is, your first days on campus when you get the job, what are those conversations like with Bryce? And Devin, like, like, what did you do? Did you work them out right away, or did you sit down with them, or was it kind of a, all of a combination above. of everything? All of the above. You know, it's. Um, I think it's our most important duty as coaches is to get to know the guys, and uh, it's not just on the court. You know, it's important, right? They know I spend the sweat equity. We, we spend a lot of time on the court. You know, Bryce and I work out every morning at, at 6 a.m. Uh, mm. He is incredibly consistent. He's there every day, uh, but it was spending time with them, breaking bread. You know, hearing their stories, learning their stories, and then getting on the court with them. Um, and kind of to go back to, to you a little bit, but it answers this as well. It's there has to be shared purpose. You know, they have their goals. I have ours as a, a group and a program. They have to, there has to be synergy there. And uh, I think it's, it's it's coming day by day. I, well, I, Bryce is my pick for, uh, you know, player you player of the year by the time this thing is done in the next five or six months and I was going to ask you what is his mindset been like uh, this offseason those 6 a.m. workouts he's that been great. tells the tale right he's, there. He's uh, transformed his body uh, you know he wins every sprint um, wow you know he's in there every morning um, he's changed his shot uh, he's been great.
Yeah. How do you guys want to play? I mean, is it, what stylistically do you want to kind of play to, similar to the way you played at George Mason when you were coaching? Or? Well, you know, st- the way we play is the based on personnel. I think when we we, we played, when you seen us at George Mason, yeah. two of our best shooters were out with broken yeah. hands. That's right. So, Ticket uh, was out. Right. So we played a lot slower, yeah. you know, than we typically would. I think ideally, if we're healthy, we'll play in a tempo style. We'll press some. We'll um, we'll try to be disruptive. Defensively, we, we 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 value the rim, we value the three, but um, it, uh, it 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 all starts with our defense. Yeah. It's the most important thing we have to do because uh, it travels well in the suitcase. You talk about player development. What stands out to us is the way that you attack the job from the get-go. And for the viewers out there who might not know, I'd love for you to share the story of being able to have Garway Dual recommit to Providence and, and ensure that he was a friar. Yeah, you know, we quickly identified, you know, Matt Palumbo specifically on our staff, one of our assistants quickly identified uh, his ability. Um, you know, uh, we weren't really recruiting in the top 30 realm, you know, at George Mason, you know, per se. So we weren't familiar with Garway. We, we, we quickly were uh, day one on the job, flight to LA to meet with him, his coaches, his family. And uh, was very, very excited to um, gain that recommitment to PC. Now I've got now, what something kind of, to what share. What kind of player is he? Can you, can you give us a little rundown on Garway? Yeah. What, what makes him such a, a talented freshman? Uh, his his spatial awareness is incredible. He sees things. He sees patterns on the court that, um, frankly, I don't as a coach a lot. Um, he's a really good passer in the open floor. He's elusive. Uh, he's quick. He's shifty, um, and he. He, uh, and defensively, his wingspan is incredible, so yeah. he can, uh, can, can do a lot of things garnering steals. I've got something to share with both of you. Okay. When I went out to Providence a couple of weeks ago. You hit Federal Hill. Well, that was a given, yes. Okay. <laughs> but what also happened was I was able to work off what happened on Federal Hill because <laughs> this is the first time that a coach has ever offered to help me with my shot. Wow. Kim English worked with me on my shot technique, and since it has been totally <laughs> changed. Did he, did he start off with form shooting inside? How do well, you tackle that one from the one on one first? So actually, go? we, we no. play one on one. He didn't tell that part of the story. We, we play one on one. Don't let and, the facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> and then I helped him with his shot. I, he's been in <laughs> he uniform on shot. campus before too. He Arthur could pull shot. that tape. He does have. He has good form. It's compact. Yeah, but he does have good form. That's Coach English. Man, many skills. Kim, I like. Thanks, thank Kim. you guys. Appreciate it, Coach. Good luck thank in you year guys. one. Appreciate Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. There he is. Mindset. It is alive in Friartown, and big things are coming in Providence. Paul Frischner is with Devin Carter right now. Thanks, John. Devin, I know there has been a lot to navigate through this offseason. How has this offseason been for you as a team, as a returning player to, to a new coaching staff? Uh, I mean, it's been a blessing. I mean, at the end of the day, coaching changes or you know just take the good with the bad uh i understand the business side of it my pops i may play in the nba so obviously there's a lot of business in, into it but no it's been really good though i mean we love kim brings a lot of energy to the court brings a lot of energy to the community the fire town so it's just been great though well, what was your first impression of coach english when you got to meet him for the first time uh, he was a competitor. First thing he wanted to do was play one on one. So, uh, I mean, it was very, it was very fun. How'd that go? I won. I won <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So I won two zero, and I mean, he gave our point guard Jaden like he played him one on one. So he's like, if you win, uh, you can go where you want, or if you, if I win, or as in Kim, he was like, you know, you have to st- take your name out the portal. Kim beat him, and uh, he took his name out the portal, or whatever. So we kept our point guard. And he gave me the same thing, but I ended up staying regardless of the <laughs> outcome, for sure. So were you a little nervous going through that? No, no, no. no. I, knew I, I knew I was going to win. No doubt, no doubt. Well, you also had a chance to take an international trip this year as a team, got to go out to Spain. And you know, as much as you're able to practice and, and play throughout that experience, it also is a good team bonding experience, right? What does a trip like that do for a team like Providence? Uh, I mean, we had new transfers come in with uh, Coach English, so I mean, it was very good for us to, you know, just build with each other, have a great team trip, uh, build camar- camaraderie, and just 
spend time with each other for the most part. I mean, I didn't get to play out there because I had uh, surgery on my thumb, but uh, it was it was a great experience overall. What are you most looking forward to coming into this season and building off of what you did last year? Uh, I'm looking forward to just playing games. I mean, it's been a long off season. You know, we've played against each other a lot, uh, and just can't wait to can't wait to uh, play against other teams. I, I gotta compliment you here. I mean, this is a great look. Appreciate you, nah. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Devin, thank you very much. Best of luck this season coming up. Appreciate it. Thank you. John, back to you. We turn to the Creighton Blue Jays. It is year 14 at the helm for Greg McDermott, who joins us now. Fresh off of a Pittsburgh Steelers win this past Sunday, the <laughs> AFC North is the best division in football. It is. Just some fans act in a little bit more mature way than others. So, you know, it's the... <laughs> Subliminal. Yeah, yeah. I tried to We pay act a like we've been there before. You have been there before. <laughs> and your team's been there before in Omaha. And now you've got a group that is picked to finish second in the Big East and is a top 10 team. When you think about this year's team, as opposed to last year's team, there are different pieces. How do you feel that you're different? Well, t two years ago, that, you know, the team last year that was picked in the preseason top 10 the year before was picked eighth or ninth in the Big East mm -hmm. so you know, dealing with those expectations was a little bit of a shock to their system I think this group understands it better uh, takes it for what it is you know preseason predictions in this day and age with the transfer portal is they're about as meaningless as they've ever been because you just don't know how different rosters are going to develop with all the new pieces but obviously we returned th return three really really good players and great leaders um, and that's put us in a position to look like we have a chance to be pretty good what's been the mindset uh, off the court with these guys because you you were so close there you, you know you're making that push you're making that run towards the final four and now you have so much veteran experience coming back yeah I, you know I think it's coach speak when we as coaches I think players think it's coach speak when we talk about the value of one possession. Um, I think those three guys, Trey and Baylor and, and Ryan, now understand that when I bring it up in practice, like it's real. Like yeah. there was a lot of possessions in that San Diego State game. Uh, take the last one out of the game that we could have done a little bit better job offensively or defensively that could have impacted the outcome of the game. So I, I think that has really has the attention of the leadership of our program, and they've been able to pass that on to the new guys in our program and some of the guys that are developing and growing um, as they've been in our program. Coach, it's got to feel good for you to have three core leaders in Trey, Ryan, and Baylor um, back, knowing what to expect as you just described. My question is, how does your team change or how much has it changed uh, with Nimhart not being there? Do you see Baylor playing more at the one? Was that a committee thing, or how is that going to be? Yeah, we brought um, in Stephen Ashworth from, from Utah State, uh -huh. and, and he had a great career there, led him to the NCAA tournament as their point guard. He and Trey will share ball handling du duties a lot, but to your point, Baylor also can initiate offense. He can play in a ball screen. He can play in transition. And, and what's been really nice is all three of them understand how to play with the ball, but probably even more importantly, they all understand how to play without the ball. Right. Um, and and Stephen Ashworth really understands if Baylor and Trey are in space or in an action with Kalkbrenner, I, I've got to get to the right spot on the floor. And, and Ashworth shoots it so well, you have to respect him six feet behind the line. So, uh, you know, it, it has really worked organically, uh, adding Ashworth to that group. and. Um, it's, it's made some, for some pretty competitive practices. I was, I was going to ask you for the, uh, you know, for the Big East hoops junkies that didn't see Ashworth play at Utah State, how would you compare his game to Nemhart? Would, would it be that deep range in stretching the day? Yeah, I mean, his shooting numbers, obviously, R2 shot the ball well for us, and especially in the NCAA tournament. But, you know, Ashworth shot 44, 45% from the three point line and shoots it with a little bit more range. Uh, he's not going to get to the rim and do all the things. R2 was elite at being able to get to the rim and finish at the rim. Um, and like like Ryan, had, he had a very positive mm -hmm. uh, assist-to-turnover ratio. Stephen Ashworth has that as well. Uh, but I think probably the, the biggest difference is R2 is a point guard his whole life. And when he didn't have the ball, he was kind of always working his way back to get the ball. Yeah. Ashworth yeah. understands, I give it up, I get away, I may get it back, I may not. Uh, and I can let those other guys do what they do. So he, I think his ability to play off the ball is just a, probably a little bit more natural than Ryan Nemhard, who played point guard his whole life. Mac, 
we talk about what's next and what's coming all the time. The, the fact is, Creighton University had been to an Elite Eight one other time, and it was when the NCAA tournament was, was very different. Eight. Eight, <laughs> Eight teams. Yeah. yeah. And that was, they qualified. <laughs> I guess my point is, we're often talking about, okay, can they make the Final Four now? Can they do this? Can they do that? How do you balance the appreciation factor of the history that this group this past year accomplished, putting that in perspective, while also balancing this thought of, hey, well, they're right back there, and you were the possession away. Our focus every year has been on the Big East, and what do we have to do in the non-conference portion of our schedule to prepare ourselves for what's going to be a gauntlet in the Big East, and then how can we navigate all the different styles, all the great coaches, all the great venues, the great fan bases that we have to play in front of during those 20 games. And then hopefully can we be playing our best late February, early March as we move into the Big East tournament. If you can do all that, you're ready for anything you're going to see in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, we really are, our focus is on the Big East conference and that portion of our schedule. And then you just hope you don't lay an egg. You know, like we, we played maybe our worst game of the year against Xavier in the semifinals, quarterfinals, or semifinals of the Big East tournament. Xavier had a lot to do with that, but we just weren't clearly ourselves that day. And that happens a few times a year, and you just hope it doesn't happen at the NCAA tournament. But, um, you know, I think the focus on the Big East portion of your schedule and how important that is and how challenging that is to prepare for all those different styles really prepares you for anything that's going to come after. Coach, i got to tell you, I've, I've always respected you as much as every head coach in the country, but the way that you hit John between the eyes to temper his expectations for Cleveland Browns football, I have to tell you the respect level now is – at a true Hall of Fame level and at another. Well, I mean, sometimes honesty is the best policy. Yeah. And you know, you sometimes, you, yeah, you have to, enough yeah, he, is he enough. He needed that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, we've never been there before. I tried to pay him a compliment on his win in Los Angeles. Yeah. And yes, he hit me straight between the eyes. There were a lot of fans out there in L.A. Yeah. The place yeah. is rocking. Well, there are no Rams fans okay. in L.A. Thank you. Every Rams. It, it looked like you've. You know, you've made some new friends in Cleveland, though, in the dog pound. I mean, there's. I have. I was impressed with some of the folks that you know were yeah. obviously joined it, enjoying it. What do you think Coke about his barking? You? What about his barking? The barking, maybe, maybe it needs to go. <laughs> Greg McDermott, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's send it Appreciate over it, to Coach. Paul Frischner Thanks, guys. with Trey Alexander. Trey, it's great to talk to you, and we had a chance here while John was talking to your coach, Greg McDermott. You and I were getting to catch up about some of the things you were going through this offseason and how you've been able to take last season and prepare for this year. I know last season didn't end the way that you wanted it to, but what were some of the things that you can take from that bite at the end of the season and apply it to this year? Uh, I think I think that it's that, that you have to apply pressure at all times. Uh, I think that last year we kind of got a we kind of had a couple stints where we got a little complacent, and I feel like that was the reason that we lost a couple games last year. And I think that a year of growth for us was, was very big. Uh, I think that us having, uh, you know, me, Baylor, Calk, uh, Steven, who's been a guy that's been able to have have played against a lot of great competition and being able to play at the high level that he's played at, uh, to have that year for us and just another year of maturity is big for us. One of the trademarks of this Creighton team is how well you can score the ball, and in particular, how well you can shoot the ball, and you bring in some extra firepower there in Stephen Ashworth. You were just mentioning him. Have you had a chance to have a competition against him between you, Baylor, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, uh, Steven, Steven shoots the ball at a really high clip, as everybody knows. Uh, he's added a great a great sense of scoring and obviously, obviously leadership as well. We really haven't been able to have a real competition, uh, but I do remember, uh, I would say, like the second or third day of practice, me, him, and Baylor kind of got into a couple of spot shooting and then kind of seeing how many we can make in a row, and Steven – Steve, Steven outdid us that day, so, yeah. <laughs> Does it feel like when you see that kind of performance, you, you want to elevate your game too? Everybody's just working off of each other? Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's one of those things that everybody has that competitive nature. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to lose in anything. So, I, I, I definitely definitely made me want to up my game a little bit in terms of being able to shoot the ball uh, as well as he can. When the Blue Jays as a team get all of these preseason accolades and you go through this offseason and you're consistently practicing against each other, 
How excited are you now to be a couple of weeks away from finally being able to play somebody in another jersey? Yeah, I, I think I think it's great. I, I think it's one of those things like you're just you're just anxious to get out there and play against somebody different and show, showcase what what people haven't been able to see uh, all off season. I think that uh, obviously we ended last season off on a on a kind of bittersweet note, but I think that this year that we'll be able to really get out there and show what we can do, and, ha and we'll have a great team that gels really well, and I think we'll be able to move the ball as, as well as we have in the past years, and being able just to show what we can do in, in conference, but also out of conference as well. This Big East Conference this year is going to be one of the best Big East Conference is really since realignment. When you look at how well these teams are positioned against each other all the way one through 11, what kind of a challenge does it feel like you all will have to overcome this year if you want to get to the mountaintop? Yeah, I, I think that it's one of those things that you that you can't take a night off. Uh, I think that we have seven teams that could they could easily make it to uh, March and be and be contenders. Uh, I think that this year, like you said, it's the it's the best year that we've had since realignment, and I think that uh, every night you have to bring your A game, or you might you might lose that game. Uh, I think that uh, we obviously have Hall of Famers coming in, and we have guys that ha haven't really been able to get that feel for the Big East but I think that uh I think I think that for us to, to climb to the mountaintop you just have to really stay focused night in and night out and and really have to bring your A game well Trey I know that all of us are very excited to see how the Creighton Blue Jays do this year and to be able to watch your games always a thrill thank you very much for taking a few minutes today thank you for having me John back to you we turn from the Creighton Blue Jays to the DePaul Blue Demons. It's year three of the Tony Stubblefield era. Coach Stubbs is with us now on Big East Media Day. So, Tony, year three. We just talked a little bit before getting you on camera about this group. What's going to be the strength of this DePaul team? You know, I think our depth is really going to be the strength of this team. That's the one thing we really focused on during the recruiting process, is get a little bit more depth, athleticism guys that can play multiple positions. So, you know, throughout our first 19 practices, that's something that's really stood out to me. It's just the athleticism and guys being able to play multiple positions. Elijah Fisher, the transfer from Texas Tech. For the, for the Big East fans that may not have seen him play, how does he affect your depth factor? Elijah Fisher is going to be a big piece of the puzzle for us. You know, Elijah Fisher is a young man that reclassified and went to Texas Tech a year early, so he should be a true freshman this year. Mm. But he was coached by a hell of a coach, Mark Adams, obviously um, playing in a competitive league like the Big 12. Um, he started some games as a freshman, so he comes in with some experience. You know, he's played in hostile environments in the Big 12, so he's definitely a big piece of the puzzle for us this year. I want to hear about Deshaun Nelson and the jump you're expecting from him coming back. Versatile 6'6", six, 6'8", six, six, combo forward. What are you expecting from him this year? Deshaun Nelson is a very talented young man. Um, coming from Kilgore Junior College, it takes junior college guys a little time to get adjusted, especially coming into a league like the Big East. But Deshaun has taken the jump over the course of the summer, the fall. He's worked extremely hard. He's been very dominant in some of our practices. He's a guy that can play multiple positions. He can guard multiple positions. He knows what it takes. He knows how hard you got to play night in and night out to be successful in the Big East. So I'm really looking forward to Deshaun taking a next step. Um, I think Deshaun has a chance to be an all-conference player in this league. Stubbs, I think the natural question, which, which I'm sure you're talking with your players about, is let's face it, th this league is as tough as any in the country. And I, unfortunately, you've been, this program's been looking up. Absolutely. How does this start to get turned around? You know, number one thing is, you know, we got to compete night in and night out. We got to be a blue collar team that competes in the best league in the country with the best coaches in the country. You've got to put yourself in a position to win close basketball games because these games are going to come down to the wire. But I think what really helps us this year is our depth, our athleticism, being able to go eight, nine, ten deep. I think that's really going to pay huge dividends for us this year. And again, we're going to have to compete night in and night out every time we step out there on that floor for 40 minutes and put our best foot forward. Coach Stubbs, that what would, I mean, obviously the, the transfer portal now, the, this has changed the landscape of college basketball across the board, but as you talk about battling night in and night out in conference play with the Big East, what, what philosophy or angle do you take now into your game plans or your personnel decisions that 
maybe you didn't know before you coached in the league? Defense and rebounding. We've got to be at the top from a defensive standpoint and rebounding the basketball. We've got to hang our hat on being able to get stops. We're not going to go out there and get 80, 90 points night in and night out. But if we can go out there, get stops, get consecutive stops, we're going to give ourselves a chance when that ball isn't going in the basket. I guess, I guess my last question, Coach, is you know, Caleb Murphy, you consider one of your backcourt anchors. How would you describe his game and what are you expecting out of him this year? You know, Caleb Murphy is one of the more talented and athletic guys that I've coached. You know, he's very quick with the basketball. You know, unfortunately, he had some issues, um, injuries, I should say, last year where he missed 12 to 15 basketball games and came back, you know, during a challenging time, a point during the Big East play. Yeah. But he's very quick with the basketball. He's great getting downhill. He can really guard the basketball. So Caleb's going to be, be a big part for us this year. You know, he came from University of South Florida, and um, he's played at a high level, and we're really looking for Caleb to step up and take a leadership role with this team. Okay. So, so, Coach, do you see this as a team that you could possibly go 9, 10 deep? I mean, you talk about depth. How, how, how deep do you see this team being? I, I definitely think we can go 9 and 10 deep, and that's something that we really looked at during the recruiting process. Again, we've got some guys from the portal that have played at the highest level. You know, Chico Carter shot 45% coming from South Carolina. Elijah Fisher played in the Big 12. Jaden Henley started games as a freshman at Minnesota. So we've got some guys at the, out of the portal that have played at a high level, and I definitely think we can go 8 to 10 deep. Guys, I got to be honest with you. A couple of weeks ago, unfortunately, uh, due to some scheduling, I didn't make it out to Chicago. I got to get there to visit Coach Tubbs. But I can tell you right now, there is no better diner in the mm. Big East than Tony Stubblefield. He, he, is, That's good he to know. always okay. finds the best spot in Chicago to hit. Well, I tell you what, he was planning on coming, had a reservation that batters and berries, the best French toast that you can find in the it's country. It's a little disappointing you didn't get there. I had a reservation at Gibson's. They were waiting for him. Wow. They had the big steak waiting for him. They had the it's a little disappointing. You can't he use no snow. Yeah, what, what, what's your excuse? Another rain? Assignment. You're going to need a rain check on that. I'll Definitely a rain in, check. Yes. You can't pass up Gibson's. Appreciate you. Gibson's yeah. on me next Good luck, time. Coach. No, on me. Okay. That's the only way I would have it. it. Tony <laughs> Stubblefield. There he is. Coach, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Stubb. Thank you, guys. Paul Frischner is with a Blue Demon. John, thanks so much. Jeremiah Oden joining me now. And, Jeremiah, i got to start off on asking you, how is Chicago different from Wyoming? Uh, it's a lot different, you know. I'm from Chicago, though, so I'm used to the difference. But Wyoming's more of like a, you know, a naturist vibe, mountains, all that. Chicago's more like the big city, but but I love it. It's yeah. what I'm used to. It's what I grew up with, so I love it. Is it good to be back home? Yeah, it's great to be back home. Just being able to, you know, be in a familiar environment, getting to spend time with my family, my mom, my grandma, siblings, all that. Are you excited to have a lot of your family there and being able to go to your games this year? Yeah, it'll be huge. I definitely have a great home base, a lot of support, so I'm looking forward to it. As far as this offseason goes and making the decision to transfer to DePaul, what were some of the things that went into that decision? And outside of just playing in your hometown, where did DePaul appeal to you? I think DePaul appealed to me first with uh, Coach Doublefield. I think that he had a great pitch for not only me but for the program. Um, Dwayne Peavy as well, I think he had a great vision for the program, and I just liked everything um, on my visit and everything, just all the love from all the coaches um, that recruited me. And I also liked um, the vibe when I you know, was with the team, and I just felt like it was a group of guys that I think could take a huge step this year. What is that step? What are some of the things that you've done in this offseason that you feel like you all have done as a group to grow, to prepare yourself for this year? I mean, we've been working extremely hard throughout the summer, throughout the preseason, just in the weight room on the court just trying to make sure that we are doing all the little things. That's really what we've just been trying to harp on is doing the little things, crashing the glass, um, moving the ball, making an extra pass. And I think that we're doing a great job at those things. This system and DePaul and how everything is being developed this year for the Blue Demons, how do you feel like you're set up for success this year? I think we're set up for success in a tremendous way. We have a lot of versatile players that can play a lot of different positions, and I think that that's something that every team needs. Um, we have a lot of experience as well. Myself, we got guys like Chico. We got guys like Mac transferring in. We got the returning guys. We have a lot of guys that have played meaningful college basketball games, so I think that that'll pay dividends going throughout the season. Jeremiah, thank you so much for taking a few minutes here, and best of luck this year. Thank you. I appreciate yep. it. John, back to you.
Thank you, Paul. We were just talking about New York City transportation and the ways to get into Manhattan with a man who understands it <laughs> very well. It's Rick Patino, the Hall of Famer, the St. John's head coach, joining us now on Big East Media Day. You were just giving Vin Parisi some advice on how he can get from Queens to Manhattan. Oh, listen, I'm Westchester County like him. You're the Hoboken, Boontown, New Jersey, whatever it is. I mean, come on. <laughs> Rick, it's the Garden. It's Big East Media Day. How would you describe the emotion? Well, for me, it's the third time being back in the Big East. Uh, obviously, I took over when the inception of the Big East was seven years prior to that at Providence College. I sat in the stands, courtesy of Dave Gavitt, and get me two tickets to a place called, I think it was Rupp Arena, and watched Villanova beat Georgetown. I was at midcourt. I saw one of the great games of all time. And then, uh, seven years later, Providence was in a Final Four. The following year, P.J. took Seton Hall to the final game. And then I go to Louisville and back in the Big East, which I would never expect for Louisville, Kentucky. And now, uh, being back full cycle, not having to move, awesome. Your, your press conference was here seven months ago. Feels like it was yesterday. And you've already, you've overhauled an entire roster and you've played a double overtime exhibition game against Rutgers. Like, what, what is this? I mean, how, how do you, how would you put in the words this off season with the guys? It's a lot of fun. That's number one. I, I had two, two goals to make them understand what it takes to win and how hard it takes, how much energy you have to put into it. And the second thing, I want them to have fun doing it. Because if it's not fun putting in this grind with 14 new players, then you can't turn it around. So we've had a lot of fun together. Uh, they're working extremely hard. We're a long way from where I want them to be. But when you recruit players of offensive backgrounds, it's very difficult getting them to understand defense. Yeah. So you take R.J. Luis from UMass. They lost good offensive player. Uh, my Ivy League connection two good offensive players they've been well coached but they don't guard anybody can't guard you guys at the podium <laughs> um, joel soriano yeah. the first time he gets in his defensive stance will be the first time yeah. so all these guys are very yeah. good offensive basketball players and if they want to win they have to play defense and that's what wins that's why connecticut won it was yeah. connecticut a great offensive team certainly they played fabulous defense all great teams play great defense, and you can take any sport, the NFL, you can take uh, lacrosse, you need to play great defense as your common denominator. Because there's always that night when you go to, you're getting ready to win a national championship. I never forget telling my team, if you can't match Wichita State's defense, because they were the best team in the country defensively, you're gonna have no shot at a national championship. Mm. You must play this game and be better defensively. If you're not, Wichita State's going to the final game. Coach, what would you say, I mean, it's been a whirlwind for you, and, and you brought in a brand new team built around Joel, and the first order of business for you when you got the job was to sit down with him. How has it been kind of getting through to him specifically and getting him to understand his role and picking up the concepts that you're trying to teach him now that you're running the show? Well, as you know, because you're a graduate, Joel Soriano is a five-star person. But up until a week ago, he wasn't even starting. Yes. He was beating, beat out by Zuby from Kansas. Right. And he just turned the corner in the last week, and he's now starting. So it's been full cycle. I don't think Joel, Joel, even though he's a 50th uh, basketball player, he has the most upside of any player on the team, the most potential. Even more than Simeon Wilshire and Brady Dunlap, but two freshmen. Because he's not close to his potential as a basketball player. First thing he had to do is get his body fat down from 14 to nine, mission accomplished. The second thing he has to do is learn to be a rim runner, every single possession, mission accomplished. Improve your outside shot where you can make some threes, mission accomplished. Now he's just gotta play with a high motor for every minute he's out there. And if he can do that, we'll be a good team. You, you've, you've mentioned several times about how, you know, the defense is a work in progress. You have so many different guys that could shoot the ball from three-point land. Well, what else offensively, what, what, else, what other dynamic are you seeing right now that, you know, could be a tough matchup for teams in conference play? 
Well, I, I think we're not a great offensive team. We play at a good pace. We're unselfish. I don't, I don't know who the best offensive player is mm -hmm. on this basketball team. I would venture to say that one night Chris Ledlam could could be the leading scorer. The next time it could be Danis Jenkins. The next time it could be Jordan Dingle. It could, I, I couldn't tell you who's going to be the leading scorer. I think there are eight or nine basketball players that have the ability to score the basketball. But I'll, I'll repeat it again. We're not a very good defensive team. Uh, it's it's something that we're working on. And, and uh, to be honest with you, they shouldn't be a good defensive team. Mm. 14 new players who've never communicated defensively together. It's just going to take time and, and energy. Coach, when you have a new team the way you do, leadership is crucial. And I had heard about Danis Jenkins before he got here. I had seen him play a little bit, but I didn't really know his game until I got to see him practice. And it took me maybe uh, five minutes to understand that it's really his team in terms of coach on the floor, leadership, trust, being able to point out to the other guys what you expect in certain drills. Can you share with the viewers what he means to you and how important his role is for the team? Well, he's, a quarter, he's the quarterback of the team. So everybody in the huddle has to listen to the quarterback because he knows what he's talking about. He's played under me, so he knows the offenses, the defenses, the underneath out of bounds plays, the sideline out of bounds plays, the presses. He knows it all, so he can help them out. He's also very vocal. He's a winner. He's a pro. This young man is a pro. He's going to play professional basketball without a doubt because he's 6'3", he's athletic, he can score. He's a very good assist turnover person. Uh, he plays great defense. So he, he's got all the things that a coach likes. And certainly he, give, he brings that high motor every single day. And he's the leader of the team. Uh, he's not the captain. Joel's the captain. Right. But he's the leader. Can I ask one more thing? Sorry. Absolutely. We're playing. I, sh I shouldn't say we. St. John's is playing. You can say we. I can yeah, say we. This is St. John. The loyalty come, is coming. We're, we're playing eight games in the garden. That doesn't happen without you. Um, what does that mean to be in the garden and kind of reclaim what this building means to you, St. John's and the Big East, and just the fact that there's going to be eight games here in St. John's in the garden? What does that mean? Well, I'd like to get it to 10, <laughs> and that's, that's certainly something that we're looking at because we want to play – uh, next year, we're talking about playing Duke in Arthur Ashe Stadium. We're, we're playing three games That's in the awesome. UBS Center right now. They have 18,000, 19,000 people because my uh, friendship with Lou Lamarillo. But we'd like to play 10 in the Garden. We'd like to get uh, and next year Alabama here in the Garden along with another big name. Look, I've only got uh, not six years to live. I've only got six more years. Please, God, give me, <laughs> give me that time. But uh, I've got six years to coach at St. John's. So... For me, growing up on 26th Street in the east side of Manhattan, uh, growing up also in Queens, New York, also on Long Island, to play in Madison Square Garden special, uh, if we can get 10 games in here uh, alongside, the, we all know the Knicks Rangers come first, Harry Styles next, and then us. <laughs> <laughs> so it just takes a little time. That's great. Yeah. Before we let you go, along those lines, when you walk in here and see those banners and see – Louis's name and think about the task at hand. You've completed so many tasks throughout your career, have elevated programs. What would it mean to play St. John's basketball back where it belongs? I think it would be tremendous. I go back to the late 50s and early 60s rooting for St. John's. For me, uh, I've coached at camps when Shaheen and Sean Miller were great young players <laughs> yeah. uh, in this league, as well as Danny Hurley. Um, so many great players have become great coaches that I'm going to go against. And to bring back a place that Louie built into something special, Louie still comes to our practices. He was at our double overtime yes, game against was. Rutgers and stayed every second, then called me the next day to give me a little insight into the game. Yeah. So yeah. it's great. Uh, Louie was the most humble, best coach that the Big East has ever had. He had the total package of humility, hard work, winning abilities. Everybody loved Louie along with the city. So to take over a job, build it back up to where he had it would be something special. Buzzing the Big Apple is real. Yes, it is. Rick Pitino is back in the Big East and all is right in the world. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate thanks, Coach. Me, guys. There he is. Paul Frischner is now with the St. John's big man, Joel Soriano.
Joel Soriano, it is great to talk to you with you right now and to get your thoughts on maybe what is one of the more anticipated St. John seasons in quite a long time. What is it like to now be playing under a Hall of Fame head coach in Rick Pitino? Uh, it's definitely an honor being able to play again, uh, for him. Just the, just the background that he has, just the basketball knowledge that he brings to our team as uh, something I couldn't even like dream about. Uh, people dream about playing for coach, so um, I'm honored to be able to play for him. What's maybe the biggest thing that he has already tried to bring out of you this offseason? Uh, just how hard you need to work to reach your goals. Um, he has a very high aspirations for me. Um, he pushing me to a level I've never been pushed before. So being able to have a Hall of Fame coach like that that cares about you and wants to see the best for you um, is something that I could, I'm very happy to, to, to be able to play for him. One of the things he was just talking about with John was getting your body into right shape and getting into a spot where you feel like you're fit enough to play at this level and where he wants you to be. So how hard have you worked on that and do you feel like you're at a good spot there? I mean, well, since the summer we have been – we had, we had a set of plan before the summer has started. We uh, said that I need to get my body fat under 10% and get to around 255, 250. So we had set a goal at that point. Um, it was now just to put in the work. Um, I wouldn't say it was easy. It was very hard. Um, very uh, more mentally hard than physically, for sure. Um, but uh, he just pushed me through it. He kept me, kept me going, trying to tell me that this is the best thing for my body, for my career. And I mean, I, I just, I still did that. I believed in that. So as once we got there, it was, it was a great feeling. I felt a difference definitely on the court. So very excited for that. To hear Rick Patino say that you have the most upside on this team, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means the world. Just a coach saying, coach coming from him, saying that how many pros that he, he has coached, how many people that he knows, plays in the NBA and even overseas. And be able to tell me that I have the most upside on the team is like very eye awakening and it just tells me how much more work I need to be putting in. So um, it goes hand in hand. I think it's very great that he has told me that, and now I just have to put in the work. St. John's is going to be back in Madison Square Garden this year. You're here on this floor. You look around. Of course, you have the Big East tournament experience, but now to play in the regular season at a consistent level like this this year, how excited are you to be back here in this building? I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm always happy to be in this building, man. This is a home. This is my home. This is our home court advantage. Um, I'm just as excited as a competitor, but even as the, when the fans come here, how excited they are to play here. Just the history behind this arena is like overwhelming. It's uh, unexplainable. You can't even put it into words, uh, the feeling that you get when you come into this arena. So I'm just very excited to be able to play eight home games here, and I can't wait. If you had one message for St. John's and Big East fans and what they can expect out of this Red Storm team this year, what would that be? We here. Joel, thanks so much. John, over to you and Coach Neptune. It is great to be joined by Villanova second year head coach Kyle Neptune here at Big East Media Day presented by Invesco QQQ. John Fanta and been Parisi Tariq Turner with you as well. Kyle, it's fun to talk this time of year about what your team can be. And it's the season of we think we got a shot, we're excited, we're all this. Your group, though, Tariq just said, you're, you're going to be fun this year. What's it like coaching this team, which has a blend of returnees, big-time faces, but also guys that come into your program after multiple years of college experience? Yeah, I think uh, college basketball now is an old man's game. game. Uh, it was funny. We were doing an uh, um, alumni dinner the other night, and uh, we were introducing our guys, and it was like, all right, we got to freshmen, sophomores, juniors, then we skipped and just went grad guys. Yeah. It was like grad student, yeah. grad student, grad student. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's just this day and age in college basketball. Um, but we're, we're very uh, fortunate to have the guys that we have on this roster and in this program. And we are excited about this year. Yeah, you, you start anticipating storylines for like November, December, January, this time of the year in October. And w what has it been like going on this journey with Justin Moore? Everything he's encountered in his career and when you and him talk about the next five or six months together. Yeah, I, I'm, I was fortunate enough to be around when we recruited Justin um, you know, as a, a senior in high school. Um, so you know, I've seen him for a long, long, long time now. Um, and watching his journey and his uh, maturation process has been unbelievable. 
um, and see where he is now as a player and what, what he's been through, um, not only just physically because of the injury. I think that takes a mental toll on most people as well. Um, but I, I'm happy that he is where he is now, come out the other side, and we're, we're really excited about the year he's going to have this year. And your other leader, Eric Dixon, who just continues to add new dimensions to his game each year. I mean, he started out kind of as a role player, and now he's a go-to inside-outside versatile big. What are you expecting from him this year as your senior big man? Uh, yeah, Eric, uh, like you mentioned, is incredibly versatile. Um, he's also one of the hardest workers I've ever been around. Um, and then on top of that, he's also one of the best human beings I've ever been around. So, you know, he's a guy that, you know, if you've met him and spent time with him, you just root for him as a person. Um, so, again, we're, we're really excited for the year that he's going to have and, and the leadership that he brings to our team. Let's look at Mark Armstrong because this is a guy who had a, a very nice summer competing again with USA Basketball, has steadily uh, taken through the process, and, and now it feels like from the outside that it could start to be Mark Armstrong's time as he hits year two with the program. How integral is he to what this season can be? I mean, first off, you, you mentioned it. He's had a lot of great experiences this offseason with USA Basketball. He went to um, a lot of great uh, camps as well in the offseason, and he had an incredible summer of growth for us as well. Um, you know, you saw it in glimpses last year, his freak, freak, freak speed um, and insane athleticism. Um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to seeing a lot more of that this year. Um, and then added, I think he's added um, a lot of work on his jump shot, um, his decision making. Um, he's gotten bigger and stronger. So uh, we're, we're, again, really, really excited for him uh, and where he'll be this year. Between the guys you bring back, Kyle, along with the newcomers and the transfers that you added in, Nova fans are going to be excited because of the, the personnel and the roster you've assemble but put personnel aside what what's the x factor for this group that you think is going to be key especially early with those non-conference matchups i think it's togetherness um you know you mentioned it uh, we have a good amount of uh, returners but we also have a, a good amount of new guys so uh, i think one of the main challenges for this team is just cohesion um and, and guys coming together and competing uh for each other um and you know in this early part of the season so far i think our guys have done it um you know and they've came in and kind of had no ego and just are competing for one just common goal and that's to be the best team we could possibly be Anytime you bring in a new team with a bunch of new players, as most schools have in the Big East, roles are, are very important, and you define those early. H how would it, has that worked for you? Did you define everyone's role early, or did they know it coming in, and how is that evolving? Uh, yeah, I think our guys are, have a, just a common goal to be the best team we can be by the end of the season, and they've all bought into that. Um, they all want to be a part of something special. Um, so I think that's everyone's role. Just be part of something special and just be the best you can be every day. Um, and I think as we go, uh, you know, our guys will just continue to blend and just play hard. Let's do some real talk here. Oh, boy. It, it, <laughs> you see the preseason poll come out this morning. You've got Justin Moore on your team. You've got Eric Dixon on your team. And you brought in as good of a transfer class as anybody in America. And there's a four next to your name. I, I mean, I, I know it's one thing that you have to have a response season, but how tough is this league? Yeah, I think it's an incredibly tough league. Um, you look at the players and coaches up and down on each team. Uh, you look at the, the universities um, uh, and that what, what those stand for up and down this league and, and then this, the, this arena that we play in for our conference tournament. I mean, I don't think that there's another uh, conference that can match up in, in terms of basketball. I think it's the best basketball conference in America. Because there's not a lot of yeah. conferences where a team picked fourth, you could say, can finish first. And I know you, you have to feel that way about yeah. your group, right? Yeah, I mean, our, our goal is always to be the best we can be by the end. Um, and whatever that is, we're, we're, if we've legitimately reached to be the best team we can be, we'll, we'll live with it. We'll live with those results. Now, obviously, uh, as competitors, you go into every game. If you yep. play a checkers match on the train back, we're, we're going to try to win, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, we're going to go in and just try to be the best team we can be each day. Um, and if we do that, if we accomplish that, we'll be happy with the results. Kyle Neptune. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Coach. This is a familiar face. Paul Frischner is with Justin Moore. John, I don't know if there are too many more familiar faces here to Big East fans. Joined now by Justin Moore. And, Justin, to come back this year and to have a healthy year for you, you hope, of course, is 
now, how good does it feel to be back in a Villanova uniform and playing at this level going into the season? Yeah, I'm excited to get things started with a new group of guys who are hungry and humble to get things going, and I'm just excited for the year. You're one of the most experienced players in this conference, and of course there are some very new faces on this Villanova team. So what are some of the things that you've been able to share with those new faces? Um, really about what we do at Villanova, um, the little things, the details that we uh, pay attention to every day in practice. I'm trying to show them how much of a tough conference this is going to be. Um, so just preparing them for the tough games that we're going to uh, experience. John was just asking Coach Neptune about Villanova, all the talent that you all have on this team this year, but still being picked fourth in the conference. How tough is this league? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of tough teams who've proven a lot over the years um, and had great years last year. So we got to prove ourselves, um, a new group, um, still trying to come out and show everybody what we're about. How much for you personally do you feel like your experience in facing a lot of these coaches and a lot of these teams it will pay off this year? Oh, a lot. Um, I bring a lot to the table, and I've been in so many different situations um, in many games that I've seen everything and been in a lot of situations that I can help get this team to where they want to be. I know for a lot of Villanova fans, last year probably wasn't exactly what they were expecting, but toward the end of the year, once you return, things started to look a whole lot better and get back on the right track. What are you hoping – that end portion of the season translates to this year? Yeah, um, just how together we were playing, um, how hungry we were. We were um, hungry to get better and hungry to compete at the highest level. So um, t this year is a new year um, with a new, new group of guys who are ready to get things going. Justin, thanks so much for taking a few minutes. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you. John, back to you. Well, that just came across your face <laughs> thinking about the chicken parm was amazing, <laughs> right? Yes, it is you. It's Shaka Smart, <laughs> a reigning Big East, the National Coach of the Year. We were very busy talking about Carmine's chicken parm. Chicken parm. Thank you for the invite, Coach. But <laughs> it's a great topic. That's sure, okay. John if you guys don't want to join us, we'll try to make it without you. Tariq and I can't. <laughs> I wish. I take John a will be in, check. John will be in that Uber right behind you, the Tesla following. Thank you, Vin. That's his favorite spot. Let's talk Marquette basketball, shall we? Oh, no, you have the women's. Yep, yeah, 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 it's a little busy this afternoon. Coach, it's great to have you with us. It's New York City. That's a heck of a coat. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have to come ready oh, shock is on his for game. media like day. It. Yeah, Coach Smart brought it. When you walked back into this building this morning, what were you thinking about? Man, I love being in this building. This building will never get old. And getting a chance to coach here, or watch a game here, participate in games here. I love it. What was the, and, wait, well, what was the last time you were in this building like? It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Confetti and music. You know, that game was just strange because the two that came before were nip and tuck and, you know, really, really tough wins for us. Um, and then the championship game just came a little bit more easily than anyone probably expected. But... Our guys, man, the way that they stayed dedicated to each other uh, throughout that whole tournament. And there's a lot of noise that occurs when you're here playing, um, but they stayed focused on what really matters, and it was a ton of fun to watch. You don't always see the regular season champs win the conference tournament, and you don't, in this day and age of college basketball especially, always see a team have the success like you guys did last year yet still return that many pieces to the puzzle. H how would you take us into this off season, uh, how the mindset's been? Well, you know, for us, we do things a little bit differently. Um, we truly believe in getting to know guys during their sophomore, junior, senior year in high school, building relationships with kids and parents. And so that when they get to our program, we truly know each other and, you know, not to uh, comment on what anyone else does, but for us, because we do things that way, mm. we're never going to recruit a transfer to stunt the growth of our young players. And I think our guys appreciate that. Our mentality is, man, we want guys, if they want to play college basketball, to want to be at Marquette. And then when it's time for them to go to the NBA, like Omax did, mm -hmm. see you later. You got to go. Yeah. And that was, you know, obviously an awesome move for him. First round pick. Yeah. Uh, about to get started with the Dallas yeah. Mavericks. 
And so for us, the off season was one where just continuing to grow relationships and help our guys understand this is the core of who we are. Let's build on it. You know, Coach, I, I, I got to credit you and your leadership for your personality, your philosophy and coaching kind of transforms their – it, it kind of goes off the court too. And I think it all kind of comes full circle with the way you describe your team. And you can see it in the way you guys play. You guys really like each other. Tyler, you know, Cam Jones, Stevie Mitchell, those three in particular, to have that core group back – again for the third year it's got to make your job easy like how has that been for you to have those three guys so connected playing so well together well that's another reason that i love coaching guys for multiple years several years in a row it, whenever we can uh, because walking in here today with tyler kolik oso Igadaro, stevie mitchell david joplin and cam jones was walking in here with five guys that I really, really know, yeah. and they know me. We believe that player development is personal development. <laughs> you can't become a great player without growing in all the attributes of personal character and competitive character that you know are required to be yeah. successful on and off the court. And that's what I enjoy most about coaching. I, I, I'm thinking of a year ago, you know, Tyler Kolick and company, you know, having a chip on their shoulder because they did not agree with the preseason rankings. And then besides the team success, Tyler puts himself on another level in terms of him as a player nationally. Now this season, 12 months later, completely different. Bullseye on his chest, the top of the scouting report. What was his offseason like? I got to correct you, though. It's not besides the team success. Yeah, it's yeah. because of the team success. Yeah. And Tyler understands that better than anyone. He's player of the year in the Big East because we won the Big East. We won the Big East because he was the best player in the Big East. Those things go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, the whole bullseye thing, it's interesting because the way we've always approached the game is every team is the hunter and every team is the hunted. And so the team that kind of lives out the best going after the other team and doing what goes into winning is going to win. The offseason for us was more of the same. Relationships, growth, victory. Those are the three things we value. That's what we pour our attention, our time, our energy, our love, our passion into. And that's what we did the whole offseason. Yeah. Coach, maybe share a little bit about David Joplin and his offseason. It was the Big East. Uh, last year he was the, won the Big East six-man award. Was more of a role player. With Omax being in the NBA now, he's inserted as that guy that can be a multi-dimensional, stretch-the-floor type guy. What are you expecting from him, and what kind of offseason did he have? His offseason was terrific because of two words, versa, climber. You ever been on that thing? Yes, it's no joke. And so he did John a and program. <laughs> he did a Thank program. Yeah. We can introduce you guys to the I Versa Climber. I put myself climber. in the same category. I've, 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 I've worked out on it. Improve. I love yeah. it. It's Listen, one of my favorite. I'll tell you what, about Ben. For a while. Yeah. Next time you come, it'll be great to have you. It's been a while it since has. you've come to Marquette. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you come, you and I together, maybe we'll get Jop involved too. We will get on the oh, Versa Climber. Oh, I would climber. love that. But this, this, is, this is a moment right here. He's this putting is. you on the spot. <laughs> come on, Jordy. Okay. I'm on this. What I'm he did this. was he did a I'm looking program forward over to that the course trip. of the whole summer on the Versa Climber with one of our walk-ons, Cam Brown, yeah. and he completely reshaped his body and he completely reshaped his motor, and you're going to see that on the court this year. Awesome. Wow. I'm looking forward to seeing it. The Versa Climber. i write that down. Vin Farisi's coming to Milwaukee. Hey, well, let me know when. You know, if you want to eat Carmine's the way you guys like Carmine's, Versa Climber is the perfect – Right? Segway. For sure. Because you got to work those cows off. I'm in. And Shaka doesn't age, by the way. No, of course Looks not. Looks younger each and every media day. He's a champion. Year after year. Shaka, we appreciate the time. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Thanks for it, everything coach. you guys appreciate do you. to make this league so special. Thanks, uh, Coach. Thanks, thanks Thank for you. having fun with us. Paul Frischner is with the Big East Preseason Player of the Year and the reigning Player of the Year, the All-American Tyler Kolick. Tyler, last year, Marquette was picked ninth in the Big East preseason poll, and you had uh, some choice words for your thoughts on that decision. Now this year, the preseason poll looks a whole lot different for the Marquette Golden Eagles. What are your thoughts on this year's poll? 
Not too many thoughts. I mean, the preseason poll is a preseason for a reason. You know, you still got to go out there and perform, you know, show the world what, what your team can do. So we're looking forward to doing that this year. Yeah. There are so many expectations for this Marquette team this year. And after such a successful year last year, both for you and for the team as a whole, uh, what are some of the things that you're most looking forward to out of this team? Yeah, just, you know, see, seeing if we can reach our upper limits, seeing if we can reach our ceilings. You know, last year we, we came short of that goal. We wanted to win a national championship, and, you know, another team in our league ultimately did. Uh, so that's a great motivation for us this year. I know the NCAA tournament probably left a, a sour taste in your mouth at the end of the season, as it would for anybody. But what are some of those things that you feel like now going into this year you can say, oh, we look back on that and we learn this and this and this? Yeah. The season's a grind, you know. The Big East, uh, the Big East uh, schedule is really tough, playing teams twice. Uh, you know, the, the, the games before the, the, the regular season um, and then going into the tournament, you got to be playing your best basketball at the end of the year. Uh, so that's what we're looking forward to doing this year. How do you manage your expectations personally with all the awards and the accolades, national accolades that you've been given already? I know as a human being that has to feel good. But you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me that, well, you know, it's just another award. I'm here to focus on the team. But for you personally, that has to feel good. It has to feel rewarding for your college basketball experience to get here to this point. The recognition is definitely something that, I, that I've worked for and, you know, wanted. Last year, I was just saying this to Oso. We were here last year and looking around, like, do we even belong here? You know, are we supposed to be here? And now you can walk around with, with your chin up, your chest out, and knowing that you did something in this league. But, you know, for me personally this year, I'm just going to enjoy the moment, uh, just trying to be in the moment every single game and, and not look too far forward, not look too far back, and just, just try and ride the roller coaster. The last time you were here, you were cutting down the nets. You're the Big East champions. What is it like to be back here and to know that this season is only a couple of weeks away? It's coming quick. You know, the end of the year felt like it was not too long ago, and the, the first game's coming up in just a couple of weeks now, and, and I'm excited to get going, excited to see what, what the season has in store for us. What does this Marquette team look like this year from your perspective? Yeah, we look r really similar from last year. You know, we only lost one guy, Omax Prosser. Uh, congrats to him getting drafted in the first round. I'm really happy for him. Looking forward to see what he can do this year. Uh, but, you know, it looks a lot of the same, a lot, a lot of toughness, a lot of togetherness, and, you know, just playing our brand of basketball. Tyler, congratulations on everything that you've been awarded so far and also for everything that I'm sure is to come this season. Best of luck this year. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. John, back to you. Thank you, Paul. We welcome in the second-year head coach of the Butler Bulldogs, Thad Mata now. And, gentlemen, I was just in Indianapolis over the weekend. So I'm going to give you a fun fact about Thad, and then he's going to tell you what I think is, is really an interesting story. You are friends with, that's just the way it is, Bruce Hornsby. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, long story, Bruce uh, is one of the biggest college basketball fans. And one day he was, he was doing a concert in Columbus, Ohio, and, and he runs over and comes into the gym. And my administrative assistant comes in and says, hey, this is Bruce Hornsby. He wants to, wanted to meet you. And I'm like, the Bruce Hornsby. And uh, so we ended up developing a relationship, and, and I was telling John, he's my go-to. I love music, and, and any time I don't know something, I call him, and he's the guy that gives me the information, who wrote it, when it was written, how it was played, the chord, whatever it is. And, uh, but he's, and, and, and the other thing I probably did, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made, was uh, his son Keith was transferring from UNC Asheville. And I said, well, I've, I've only, I already got two guards. I'm not going to take them. He goes to LSU and has a, a heck of a career still playing professionally. But wow. the two guys I had happened to be Jay Sean Tate and Kate Bates Diop, who are <laughs> okay. in the NBA right now. So maybe I was, yeah, maybe I was right. <laughs> Coach Horn, Hornsby not on Tariq's workout set list or playlist, but I could appreciate it. As, as I, know, a music he's a I, I would say I'm this. actually more of a Springsteen guy. Okay, okay, I, 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 mean, I like I the boss. Have, I don't have much diversity yeah. outside of the. I, I would say this. I, I went to a concert one time. Bruce was playing. It was he and his piano on the stage, and if you close your eyes, you'd have thought there was a symphony going on. I mean, wow. he's one of the most talented pianists I've, I've ever seen nice. in my life. Yeah. And you're an avid Van Morrison listener, right? Van, Mo Van the Man is the guy. I mean, I, I wow. Van well, Morrison. Today. Yes, yeah. Van yeah, Morrison. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, just pull up and you'll be like, I didn't know he sang this. This man's been yeah. on stage with Rascal Flatts. 
Well, this music. It's unbelievable. No, no, I, yeah, it's yeah. It's my, my, when, when I'm done coaching, I'm going to drive a tour bus. That, uh, that's what I want to do. I want to drive a tour bus just to hang out backstage, listen to a concert, yeah. get, get the band where they need to be next. That's, that's my goal it. in life. Does Hinkle have big time concerts? We don't. We don't. Yeah, no. You never hear of no. it as a site. They're no. not into it? No, they're. Um, I think Mellencamp played there one time, um, but they, there's. They've talked about doing them, but they've not had any in, in the time hmm. I've been there. Hmm. Yeah. Let's talk some basketball. Let's do it. We were just chatting a little bit uh, because I had the opportunity to watch your team get after it on Friday and Saturday. The Butler Bulldogs in 2023-24 are going to be different. How? Well, I, I think this. I, I think we're going to be a tougher basketball team. You know, we, we've got some guys, and, and Jamil and I were just laughing about it. They don't care who they guard. They, they'll just they'll guard anybody. I mean, Posh Alexander, you, you look, he'll, he'll guard the center. He, he doesn't even care. So I think just from the standpoint defensively, that, that tenacity, I, I think that we're, we're longer, we're bigger at positions. Um, uh, and, and, and that's going to, I think, allow us defensively to, to do a little bit more. I think offensively, I think we've added some shooting, um, some guys that can put the ball. We're going to be a team that shoots a lot of three-point shots, uh, want to play fast and, and get up and down. And um, so it's it's exciting time. We're ready to play somebody else just to see what we got. Was that the first? Was that the a main key, yeah, the perimeter right. shooting? What were what were the big things with, that you covered with your coaching staff when the season ended? Uh, about hitting the ground running in the off season. Well, I, I think first and foremost, we we wanted uh, character. We we wanted guys that because you know you look we, we've got 11 new guys on our roster. Yeah. And and we had to go out and get guys that it sort of had the same vision and knowing that, that we had to mold them into the culture we wanted uh, to have set for our program. But but shooting was was at the top of the list and, and size. You know, I've, I've been a guy. I've always had big wings. And, um, and and we were small at the wing positions last year, and and I think just with you know where we went out at it, and you know DJ Davis from Irvine um, is a guy that can can really shoot the basketball. So uh, you know, I'm I'm excited about the pieces that we've added. Yeah. So coach, you bring in Posh Alexander. We know him well. Yep. Uh, New York City guy, and I got a chance to know him really since high school, and then being local, being at St. John's, uh, know him very well. I know what he brings. We all know what he brings. Uh, has anything changed uh, with him in terms of uh, what you're expecting this year? We, we know the on-ball defender, the guard, the toughness. Um, what are you expecting from him? Is he your starting point guard? Yeah. Is he your leader? Yeah. You know, it's funny because I, one, of, one of the biggest things that, that I wanted to work with on um, Posh in the offseason was uh, how to lead a basketball team and, and, and lead them in, in the right direction. Because Posh, to me, is a natural-born leader. And... You know, getting his emotions under control and in check because he's he plays at a high level when he when he's there. You know, I, I said to him not long ago, I said, you know, Posh, because I, I love him. I said, you ever heard the expression, you're a piece of work? He goes, yeah. He goes, I don't know what that means. I said, well, you're a piece of work. He goes, is that a compliment? I said, it's the ultimate compliment that yeah. I can pay you. <laughs> and uh, but I mean, he just he, he brings such a dynamic of, of, of toughness, of competitiveness. And, and I think one of the things I, I didn't know this, his basketball IQ is incredible. And, and along with the basketball IQ, you know, he'll do things in practice. And, and I'm like, Posh, you, you should have done this. He says, I, I, I know that. He says, but I'm, I'm really trying to get Connor going today or I'm really trying to get Jamil going today. He goes, don't worry. I, 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 and he's, he's always thinking. And I, and I love that as a point guard. But one other follow-up to that, Jamil Telford. I, I, I had a chance to cover him. Actually, John and I covered him when he was at uh, Northeastern. Yep. Uh, versatile wing, six 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 seven, kind of a hybrid. Um, he, he seems to have a really good opportunity here to be one of your core guys you can build around. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited with Ja. I think strictly from the standpoint of, of uh, he, he's got such passion. And, and, you know, obviously he's got the, the physical tools. Um, his, his work ethic, you know, we talked to him, we said, Jai, you got to become a better three-point shooter. And, uh, you know, I, I was in the field house Sunday, and, and he's in there by himself getting shots up. He, he, you know, he's one of these guys that he's got humility. He knows what his weaknesses are. And, and um, you know, as, as I talked about earlier, he's a guy, he doesn't care who he guards. He'll, he'll guard anybody. And, and um, uh, you know, I, I like the fact that he was a high-level scorer at Northeastern. And, and um, you know, we're, we're hoping, we're, we're counting on him to bring us big things. You know, there's, there's a lot of unknowns when we talk to each coach because obviously everybody hit the transfer portal. So there's going to be many new faces. However, you know, when you look at the preseason list, there's, there's a ton of returners as well. 
What's going to be key when those conference games roll around in January for your squad? Well, being healthy. <laughs> I, I'd never coached a season like I went through last year with yeah. the, all the injuries that we had. I've yeah. never seen anything in my life. But no, I, I think the biggest key for us, I mean, we've got a, a daunting uh, preseason schedule. And and you know how we how we handle the good times, how we handle the bad times. Mm. Um, I, I, I think that the biggest thing for us, and, and I say it every day to our guys, is details matter, and and how we can continue to, to fine tune our details and, and not take steps backwards. I mean, we're we're a team. We know this. Our margin for error is not great. We, I mean, we've we've got to win every day, um, and, and we've got to keep building. I think that's that's the thing I'm instructing the coaches. We got to keep teaching every single day. We got to teach every single day. We got to coach. You've been a part of great conferences. You were in a very challenging Big Ten at Ohio State. Is this, though, heading into this season, as tough, as challenging of a league when you look at it top to bottom as you've been in? Oh, yeah. No no doubt. I mean, I, I said 13 years in the Big Ten, and, and then one year in the Big East, I walked out of the Big East last year. I'm like, eh. yeah. and a lot of difference here now, yeah. I'm telling you. Um, and I think that's the, the, the thing. I knew I knew the Big East was good. I, I'll be honest, I didn't know it was this good. I mean, your your national champ, they, they, UConn runs away with the national champ. I mean, there was nobody even close to them. They finished fourth in our league. And, right. And you know, I remember the night UConn beat us. Uh, I think it was our first Big East game, and I told the coach, I said, I think the team can win the national championship because they had all the pieces. And, and that's what I found, I think, when in going through the Big East. Everybody, they, they had pieces. You know, the bench was orchestrated to come in and do their jobs. And, and uh, no, great, great, tremendous league. Bad, we appreciate the time. All we'll right, guys. Out we'll some more Van Morrison, and good luck this year. Yeah. You got it, man. We'll see you. Thank there you. He is. Let's send it over to Paul Frischner. Joined now by Jamil Telfer. And Jamil, I, I just want to first off congratulate you on joining the Big East and, and coming over here to this conference. What has it been like for you so far making this transition? Um, I think the transition has been pretty smooth. Uh, Big East is a physical conference, you know, and uh, that's pretty much my game. So I'm looking forward to, you know, play some conference games and win a lot of games. What's this offseason been like for you under head coach Thad Mata? Uh, we've been training a lot, to be honest with you. You know, he's all about, like, attacking things, like, intentionally. And, uh, you know, he's just a great dude overall, the whole coaching staff. And uh, we've been working, so we just can't wait to play someone else, to be honest. So let's do it. What were some of the biggest things that drew you to this team and to this conference? Um, honestly, Tad was just preaching about needing a leader, you know, and uh, he brought, like, a lot of guys, like, uh, Posh and uh, – DJ Davis, you know, older guys that, you know, know how to lead a team and uh, won some games too. So that's what he's been preaching about. And, you know, we just got to, you know, get it together and hopefully win a lot of games. You talk about the physicality and trying to bring that over from your three years at Northeastern. Uh, what are some of those other aspects of your game that you want to see apply to the Big East? You know, um, obviously, you know, I was a pretty good scorer in the conference that I was. So I'm looking to see – how that translate and uh, defensively, I've always part of myself on being a great defender on the court um, and just, you know, leading, whether it's talking to my teammates, uh, you know, on the court, off the court and just like communicating and uh, just all of us being all one, basically all together. So what do you think this Butler team is capable of this year? Winning a biggest championship. Jamila, thanks so much. I got you. Thank you. John, back to you. Well, he's laughing, he's smiling. <laughs> I got he him can't going control himself. Last time we'll see this. Got him going. This is it. Vin Parisi already got him going. How do you keep a straight face with Vin Parisi, Shaheen Holloway? He won't smile until St. Patrick's Day, so enjoy <laughs> it now. <laughs> True. My question to you guys is how you guys keep a straight face, man. It's hard. We got two, two comedians here. This is the king comedian right so here. So for those who yeah, don't know. Yeah. Not to mention my eyes are itchy from the sports coat. <laughs> For those who don't know, they've worked together. No, I do, I do love it. Do you have any stories about him that you can share? Can't share stories on him. Not on the uh, Some of the stories we got. Can't do it, John. Was he on Can't time to work? Yes. He left across the street. He'd probably been on time. <laughs> Thank, thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shot was at my wedding. Yeah. How was that night? It was good. Great night. Great, Great night. night. Great. He liked the appetizers. He made the rounds during the cocktail hour. He came to the end. I invaded. Yes. I got in trouble too. Anybody big time desserts scene and situation. That sounds fun. His wedding was big time. 
I'm, I'm the only one at the table that went. Tariq had to miss well, it as the, well. The timing wasn't great. Labor Day on a Friday, that's tough. He had a family, you, he had a family commitment. Yeah. Thank you for hitting the dance floor. Did I? You, well. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Slow dance, slow dance. Yeah. <laughs> you, did you just wake up from that night? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk Seton Hall basketball. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Year two at the helm. You, we just saw Kadari Richmond walk by, and, and last week you said that, yeah, it's a lot to put on the man's shoulders, but I'm tasking him with leading our team. How have you seen him grow as a leader? I did last year, and I think Tariq asked me a question about, about that. Uh, and for him, um, this year has been night and day. It's been night and day. Uh, you know, he came in this summer great shape. You know, he came in the summer with a lot to prove. Um, I made him a captain. Um, you know, I, I, it's a lot of responsibility being a captain on my team. You know, um, so he's been doing everything I asked of him and, and more. You've obviously been, you know, high on these guards, Sha, w with the experience and a lot of talk out there in this preseason about Dylan to Dave Wusu and, you know, how he's transformed his body and stuff. How, how did he go about, what did you put him through this offseason physically? It's about D Dylan. Dylan, um, you know what? Just Dylan, it was, it was somebody that I was looking at coming out of high school, right? I was trying to get him at St. Peter's. Then he went to St. John's. Um, you know, and when he got in the portal, we, we talked, and you know, I said, listen, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. We both thought it makes sense for both of us. He came in. I said, listen, you got this good with your body. Um, to his credit, he did it. You know, he's a he's nutritionist. He works every day at it. Um, so super happy to have him. So you look at your backcourt, you know. Hypothetically, obviously, Kadari, Amir Dawes, and Dylan. When I think of those three guys, I think of toughness. I think of defensive-minded, uh, gritty, but talented at the same time. Kind of in a reflection of how you want your players to be in the Seton Hall culture. That's how I look at you. Um, do you feel like this is kind of the core group that you want to build around in year two? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have those guys, to tell you the truth. Um, I said it before. I'm gonna say it again. I think I got one of the, the better backcourts in the, in, the, in the league. I feel like they, you know, I feel disrespected for those guys that they're not getting that just do, but they gotta earn it on the court now. They gotta go out there and do it. Um, but yeah, so I think by having those three guys, I got three playmakers on the court at all the time. That's what I want to do. That's why I vision having. Look at my St. Peter's teams. You know, you got three guys on the court that could create and uh, play make. Um, and now we are, we a better shooting team. You know, I think that's gonna help us a lot. I got one follow-up about Kadari. You know, I, I've heard and read and, and hear about this thing about him having good days, putting good days together, and not having any bad days. What does that mean to you in terms of him having good days and practice leadership and just being that, that guy that you need him to be? It means everything. You know, I tell him all, all the time I've been an everyday guy. You got to be an everyday guy. You know, where you want to play at and where you want to go, you got to be an everyday guy. And like I said, so far, it's been night and day, fellas. I got to tell you the truth. Um, if you guys know me like most of you guys know, I don't BS. I tell the truth. You know, he's been, it's been night and day. You know, he's bringing it. Um, you know, he's talking more. He's more vocal. Um, he hasn't missed a practice. Now I'm going to say that something, something's going to happen. Watch. Right? Uh, but yeah, I we haven't missed it. a practice. <laughs> um, you know, he's been somebody that's been dependable. Um, and he's somebody that I've been counting on. And he's, like I said, him and Al and, and, and Dre, like, we're going to go as far as they take us, and I think that we're going to go pretty far because of those guys. Sha, I know how these media days work. You, you, you hear so many of the same sentences, and, and you're talking about so many of the same guys. You've had a scrimmage. You know, what? who, who had what, a scrimmage? What's a, what's a name? Who had a scrimmage? I heard that you had a team scrimmage. I don't know who you had from a guy, but yeah. Okay. That must have been bad info. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's bad info. <laughs> bad info. I'm sorry, folks. Um, Private. Yeah, closed door, right? We don't Maybe. normally we have, talk about that on the air, but, yeah. you know. I didn't say the name. Well. It was an inter-squad okay. scrimmage, it's maybe. It's October for Blue you, Blue versus too. white. It's October for you, too. It could have been an inter-squad scrimmage, Blue <laughs> versus white. What's your question for the coach? Yes, thank you, My coach. My question for the coach is. Thank you, John. Is, Appreciate it. Who, who's, what's a name and what's a guy that maybe nobody's talking about today that we could be in a couple of months? Not to put you on the spot. Good question. No, it's, it's a great question. Right? Yeah, if John ever let me get it out, I thought it was tremendous as well. 
This guy's guy the best. Um, you know, I, I think Dre, Dre, Dre David, right? I would say that why because before Dre got hurt last year, he was our leading scorer. Yeah. Right. Um, now that he's back, he's healthy. Um, I expect him to have a tremendous, tremendous role for us. And have a have a have a great season. And also to, to be totally honest with you, I think that you know Ja Jaquan Sanders, right? You know, he's a guy that you know was a four star recruit for Seton Hall before I got there. Didn't play that much last year for me. Mm -hmm. This summer he got his body in shape. Um, he, he could shoot the basketball. Um, I'm looking for him to have a tremendous jump for us as well. We look forward to watching your Pirates take the court. Shaheen, thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, Shaheen. Appreciate it, Coach. This is Coach Holloway. And Paul Frischner is joined by Kadari Richmond. You got something. It's great to be with you here, and it's good to be here hours. at Madison Square Garden. What are some of the things that you're most looking forward to this upcoming season? Um, just being able to get after it with a hungry group of guys. We went through a very hard preseason, just getting after each other. It would be good to play against somebody else. <laughs> How are you feeling personally? Uh, I feel good. I'm very happy. Uh, I like the guys in the locker room. We're very together, very ready to go. So that's all you can ask for. Yeah, I know it was probably a tough off season for you as you're trying to get cleared, trying to get back into the swing of things. And now, are you feeling healthy? Yeah, I feel good. I'm ready to go. Uh, yeah, I got cleared in July, and I've been going at it ever since. Your coach is just talking so highly of you and what you can bring to this team this year and your experience. What's it like for you to have that backing and that encouragement and that experience now and put all of that together into this season? Um, just to know that he'll be with me uh, even when I'm playing well, playing bad, in a slump. I know he's going to be there regardless, so I'm just thankful for that. What's some of the biggest things that you feel like this offseason has proved to the Seton Hall team? Um, that we're going to be able to play with anybody and beat the best of the best and just stay together through it all. If you had one message for Seton Hall fans watching this right now and, and what to expect out of the Seton Hall team this year, what would it be? Uh, a lot of great hard nose defense, uh, junking the game up, making it ugly, and winning. All right, Kadari, thanks so much. I appreciate it, and best of luck this season. Thank you. John, back to you. Appreciate it. The governor joins us at Big East Media Day inside the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Bill Raftery is with Tyree Turner of Imparisi. And I'm John Fanta. All right, coach, it's Media Day. Every coach right. is excited. Every player is excited. But there's a lot of buzz around this league. If, if you were pulling out the newspaper and reading in the morning with your cup of coffee, what would the headline be in the Big East? Where is Rick Pitino? Uh, that's the first thing they're going to ask. Yeah. Everybody's all around them over there. It's like yeah. when you it's play, Tariq. Yeah, it feels like me, yeah. <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> good one, good one. Good one. Uh, I think the big thing is the depth of the league that would jump out at me. And I think most people are you know, five, six losses I think the winner may have. So, uh, But this is the biggest turnout, I think, from the early days of the initial Big East, yeah. from what I'm told. Uh, so it's pretty impressive. I think the league's on fire. Some great players, and uh, of course, coaches are going to go nuts, but that's part of it. Well, what about, Raph, the, the crop of coaches? Because from a historical standpoint, you, you know it better than anybody. Obviously, you know, you, you have the Hall of Famer and Coach Patino, but when we're talking to teams that are picked at the bottom of the league this year, and you're talking about Sean Miller and Thad Mott, I mean, these guys have coached in Elite Eights and, and right. Final Fours. Like, th this assemblance of head coaches. Well, uh, the bottom line is all about players, too. Yeah. Uh, yes. you know, great Thank you for saying that. Great coaches become great coaches because <laughs> they have good players. It is. And I, you know, it's been, a, I think the, the most amazing thing to me over the years is Washington, New York, and Chicago, mm. in terms of success, sort of the media centers of the, of the league, have not been able to contribute in a consistent fashion. And, and I think that's about to change 
uh, definitely in New York, and you know, hopefully for both of those other two teams as well. But uh, it's, it's just amazing what they've been able to do without those people or those uh, that population that love this great sport. So I think the league just has mushroomed now, where there's great coaches who are getting much better players, and I think that's what the difference is. That's why they've done well in the tournaments. Coach, the last couple of weeks at Union Turnpike, uh, <laughs> a familiar site, um, Karnasek Arena to be exact. Um, what are you seeing? I mean, I know you're doing the Michigan-St. John's game on November 13th. Right. Um, I'm curious, what is your take so far from Rick Pitino and what he's assembled in Queens with the St. John's team? It's not surprising because I always felt he, he reminded me a lot of Bob Knight in the sense that he could coach five guys in the stands and make them competitive. Yeah. And now you raise the level of talent, which he has. Uh, you know, we were both at the Rutgers game. Rutgers is very good, by the way, as we found out yes, in the second half. Uh, but he, uh, Rick is deep, talented. They've got lead guards. They've got wings. And they missed two of their premier yeah. players in, in that particular double overtime game. So, you know, he, he, you can't make a lot of mistakes for him. He's demanding. Yes. And, he cor they correct it or they don't get their minutes. So it's, he's been doing that since the old five-star days when yeah. he lectured and held everybody in awe as a 25-year-old. I mean, he's he's a basketball guy, and he's bringing that to Queens, following, as you know, a great tradition over the years and, you know, outstanding coaches uh, going, going back to Frank McGuire. So he's a legend, and uh, I don't think there's a more fitting way for him to end his career and to elevate this program and, again, make this place hot once again here at the Garden. I loved his take in, a, in an interview I saw recently to where they were trying to bait him to go crazy on the NIL and portal stuff. And he said, well, we could either sit here and complain about it or we could just do it better than right. anybody else and, and excel at it. Yeah. But, but, but how about that dynamic of what these guys have to deal with now? Well, you know, Mike Bray said the same thing be before he left. I don't think we're going to get 20-year coaches anymore. Mm, Guys no. that start maybe f four or five years, they'll never make 20. Uh, I think the demands and, uh, you know, in some ways it becomes very personal and distasteful uh, where mm -hmm. kids are coming in and they have no contract telling you they're going to get X amount of dollars. There's no proof whether it's true or not. Uh, I'm waiting for a study in the next four or five years of kids who fall through the cracks, no degree, at 23 or 4, they're not handed an envelope, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, things change in their life. So, you know, it, it's unhealthy, uh, but if they, if NCA and others could have been a little more proactive in the 80s and 90s, you know, something may have been done. But it's out now, so you have to live with it, and you have to have that attitude. That uh, I know espouses. I would have loved to get some retroactive um, pay. You would be very well. I would have loved that, Coach. <laughs> you would be working on Wall Street. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, before we, we let you go, we've been to a number of media days here in the fall, and, and you're checking in on teams, and you're checking in on coaches. And there's something comforting about walking in here in, in the midst of all the statements and football realignment. We, we know all that that exists in college sports, and it, it feels like this league knows who it is. Right. What's the benefits of that? Well, I, I think the kids on that I-95 corridor and now – as we know, Creighton's done well and Xavier's done well, uh, so it's reached the Midwest. Uh, these kids wake up, they don't care about Auburn playing Alabama in football. Right. Uh, their life is, you know, who, be, who did Georgetown win or lose to? Or, or even, with this, what's Kansas doing this year? We might play them in the tournament, as we've seen Bill Rome have to play them the last few years. So I think they've generated this interest where this is the most important thing on those particular campuses is college basketball. And I think it attracts kids, and I think we're going to see better and better players coming here for that reason. Coach, we appreciate the time. You're, you're brooming me. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's a, it's a moderate me. stay. Uh, I don't know I'm what out. you two have done. You've controlled this man. He's very subdued. One day at a time. <laughs> we, oh, that's right. Yeah, he's a new man now. Congratulations, by the Thank way. Thank you we very went off much. We the rails a little Thank bit you. earlier, so I think we, we tried to get it back. Thank you. Very, everybody here was invited. Coach, I appreciate you and Tariq's gifts. Then Parisi was at the center of the dance floor, though. As I was, it should I'm be. Not a, I'm not a dancer. No.
Yeah, he's exaggerating. Uh, <laughs> Coach Raff, I'm sure it was so a great much. affair. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Have a great year. Thanks, Raff. Thank thanks, Raff. Look forward to it. There he is, Bill Raftery, the governor. We'll take a brief time out. You're watching Big East Media Day presented by Invesco QQQ. Back here at Madison Square Garden, Paul Fritschner joined now by Xavier's Desmond Claude. And Desmond, first of all, I, I want to congratulate you on the season that you had last year. And I know that it's got to be pretty exciting for you this year coming back. And one of really the only returning faces mm -hmm. on this Xavier team. So many new players on this Musketeer roster this year. So what is it like for you knowing that you have to assume that leadership role, even just as a sophomore? Yeah, uh, well, thank you. For the compliment, and, uh, I mean, it, it's been a, a interesting but fun experience. I mean, I knew that being the only, re, you know, returner coming back, you know, I, I would have to step up and be more of a leader vocally and, you know, by example. So, um, and quite honestly, it hasn't been, you know, that hard because everybody's, you know, very coachable. They listen and they, you know, they want to learn. And then uh, most importantly, we all want the same thing. And, you know, that's to win and get far in the tournament. And, and, you know, win it all. So To make the Sweet 16 last year with that group, how special was that for you? It was very special. I mean, I think um, I was very fortunate as a freshman, my first year coming in to even getting that far or, you know, getting, you know, to that point on top of having, you know, a new coach come in and, um, you know, have to do that whole process again. But, you know, it's been a, a, an amazing experience, you know, and, and it meant a lot. For Xavier fans that are watching this, that are thinking to themselves right now, there are so many new faces, got to learn a whole lot of new yeah. names. But what can they expect out of this Xavier team this year? Well, they could, you know, they could expect a lot of good things. I mean, we have a lot of good pieces to, uh, to, 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 you know, complement what we did last year. So um, they could expect us to play hard, win games, and and us for, you know, to put on a show. When you look at the backcourt of this Xavier team and how explosive it can be and the scoring potential, especially from beyond the arc, is that something that you really feel like falls on your shoulders as you distribute around? Um, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of, you know, good guys like Quincy, Oliver, you know, came from Rice, really, really good three-point shooter. You know, Trey, uh, the freshman that's coming in, he can also shoot. So I think our backcourt, I, I would say we're uh, deeper than last year, definitely. Um, at the guard spot, and uh, we could bring a lot of, a lot of three-point shooting, a lot of, and a lot of scoring. Desmond, thanks so much for taking a few minutes. Best of luck this season. Thank you, John. Over to you with the head coach of the Xavier Musketeers, Sean Miller. That's right. We do have Sean Miller here, proud host of the brand new Sean Miller podcast. You're in. In. Should I say it or? Go ahead. My first guest, uh, this guy right here. We flew him in. Wow. It only and, makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, 
everything's about start slow and finish big. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he'd be a great first guest, and he did a good job backing up my strategy as well. Yeah. Ease your way in. Ease your way in. That's a good yes. line. That's a good line. Thank you. Yes. Vin approves of that line, like which that. is valuable approval. Yeah. All right, let's talk Xavier Musketeers basketball. We just heard from Desmond Claude. How special can Desmond Claude be? I believe that Des, uh, especially with health on his side this year, I think he could become one of the best players in our conference. And I don't say that lightly because you guys know as well as I do, to me that's the key to our conference this season, the returning players from really good teams a year ago. They all seem to be back, and uh, which is amazing. Uh, but Des has made a big jump. You guys remember a year ago he was on the all-freshman team of the Big East. Uh, he has the size and I think the game to really go to the highest level uh, that you can playing it. And he's put a lot of work in. We've seen it early on. His shot has improved. And a lot like Colby Jones a year ago where he was the jack of all trades for our team. And that will be the role that Des will have for our team this year. I'm sure you heard, I mean, these media days, you're, you're talking to so many different people. I've heard, I'm sure you've been asked a lot about the injuries and, and those challenges. I'm more interested in what the message has been like to your healthy squad and, and, and your guys that you've really been working with this preseason thus far. Yeah, so then we lost Zach Fremano and Jerome Hunter uh, this summer, okay? So, you know, when it happened, I, I really don't have a silver lining for you. They both would have started. They both are coming back for their COVID year. And in Zach's case, you guys watched him have a season-ending injury a year yep. ago. So. It was hard, but the good part, or if there is a silver lining, it's that that seems to have happened a year ago for us. Like mm -hmm. we went to the Bahamas, which is our uh, international trip. We welcomed the, uh, 10 new players into our team and we've been at it now for three or four months. Yeah. So, uh, you know, not looking back, looking forward, I would say my hope is that we can become the team that you don't want to play, that we improve who we are in January uh, is a much different scenario than maybe who we begin with here in a couple of weeks in November. Now you brought in two transfers, Davion McKnight from Western Kentucky and Quincy Olivari from Rice. Uh, share with us a little bit about both of them and what they're going to bring to your team this year. Well, they could form our backcourt with Dez playing three guards. Quincy made more than 93 point shots at Rice last year. Excellent shooter. And we're really counting on him to fill that role for us this year. Um, and Davion is He's almost a throwback Big East guard in that he's, he's as much defense as he is offense, physicality, toughness. I think that's inherent in him, and he comes from Western Kentucky. You know, in both cases, you know, Sule Boom came from UTEP, the Conference USA, where, you know, a lot of what he did at UTEP translated to us. You know, we're hopeful that, that those two guys coming from Conference USA in their own respective right, that what they did can translate here to Xavier in the Big East. We also have a third guy played at North Texas, Abu Usman, who's a front court player, also come, coming the way of Conference USA. And, you know, with losing both Zach and Jerome, uh, Abu's experience, size, uh, physicality is something that we're also going to count on as well. You know, it, it's, it's pretty common for head coaches to join us here this time of the year. And, in, in late October and talk about what is still a work in progress or what areas they need to improve on. But is there may switching gears, is there maybe an area that you're definitely pleased with right now or you might be a little bit ahead of schedule uh, for this for not even being November yet? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, I think when you guys watch our team this year, we lost a ton from last year, but we never were a team that had great depth. In a sense, that was our Achilles heel. We're a deeper group this year, like mm. one through 10. I think we have more firepower. We have more players that there isn't a big difference between the starter and somebody who you may call our seventh man. And we have to call on that. And that has to become mm. something that fuels us mm. and helps us. I will also tell you that we have a number of freshmen um, that I believe can be really good players in our conference. We have six freshmen, which is a huge freshman class. And Dalen Swain is a name that maybe doesn't come across your radar yet. I think it will. Trey mm. Green, who's a point guard for us, who can really shoot the ball and be a difference maker. And then two international bigs, Sasha Siani and Lazar Djokovic. Sasha's from Slovenia. 
Lazar is from Serbia. John mm. saw them. Uh, I think both of them playing for their respective countries. FIBA maybe come our way a little bit more battle tested than some normal freshmen. How do you coach freshmen? Well, you know, sometimes my conversations with them really go to how do you want me to coach you? Okay. Do you want me to look at you as somebody who one day could help? Or are you, do you want to impact this year? Because there, there's two different ways of looking at that. Uh, and sometimes, you know, tough love, holding them accountable, really trying to point out the things that they're not doing well early on. It's an awakening for them because yeah. uh, they've just become the best player everywhere they've been as high school players. So we're going through some of that, but uh, I would also tell you back to your uh, question, a very coachable group. We, we don't have nice. a lot of drama. There aren't a lot of guys that you have to beg to come to practice or the gym. I think we have a group that if you're around us, John, you were, you, I think they're eager to practice and, uh, and understand that with 10 new faces, um, that's not to our advantage. We have, we have to get better each week. Now you, you're looking at the overall conference, Sean. You, you, you played in the conference, you know, in a different era. And now you look at this year, this conference this year, in terms of depth, top to bottom, how does it feel to you coming in in terms of the quality of teams, the depth of teams? Um, we've got three teams in the conference that will be in the top 10 to start. You know, does this feel like one of the deepest conference years that you've been a part of? For sure. Of my coaching time, I don't know if I've ever coached in a more balanced top to bottom league than mm. this one this year, at Big East. I believe that we're college basketball's best. And, and look, as much as you know, Coach Patino coming to St. John's, he makes an already terrific conference that much better. Uh, I think that speaks for itself. But it always comes back to the players. So I look at Villanova, and you look at Justin Moore, and really two, three, four different players that have played on a Final Four team a couple years ago. They're still there. And they went through a ton of injuries last fall. UConn won the national championship. There's several starters that impacted that national championship that are back. Yeah. The back-to-back -back defensive player of the year, Ryan Kalkbrenner, he returns at Creighton. And then the, the Big East player of the year, Tyler Kolick. Mm -hmm. Like all those guys who did what they did a year ago, they returned. So when you have that much returning talent, plus what we already know makes the Big East special. And then I, I think the other part that you guys have talked a lot about is we play each other twice, mm -hmm. 10 at home, 10 on the road. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can discount how much more difficult that makes the Big East regular season when you're playing a 20 game regular season yeah. schedule. So you're right. Good point. for me Good as point. the coach yeah. with 10 new players, uh, that doesn't bode well, yeah. but it's going to be a great challenge. This is why he's got his own show now because he just really covered the storylines across the league in a comprehensive way. Appreciate it. Coming from a Cleveland Browns fan, I'll take that as a great compliment. <laughs> I appreciate how we wanted to start off slow and, and, and build yeah, up that to was, quality. That was yeah. thoughtful. You know? That's right. The Browns it's have, like bringing along a great talented freshman. Sometimes you don't want to start them. So who do you go with? The veteran who doesn't have a lot of upside. <laughs> and then, then, then the freshman comes in, right? The grooming is important. That's he a great was my point, first Coach. Podcast guest, yeah. no doubt. What an That's honor! Coming next what week. an honor! It is John. a huge honor. Congrats, congratulations! It is a huge honor. Don't send me a terrible towel in the mail for it. That's Sean Miller, the head coach of Xavier basketball. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yep. Well, we've been running the marathon. We've gotten ten we coaches in. Ten in. Running, I don't know, crawling, running. Georgetown's next. That's right, Georgetown Thank you, is coach. You guys got his last. Uh, Appreciate it. Appreciate let's go show. back to our conference preseason honors, shall we? Conference preseason player of the year is Tyler Kolick of Marquette. Your freshman of the year is Stefan Castle of UConn. We talked about the first team a little bit with Joel Soriano, with Trey Alexander, Ryan Kalkrunner, Bryce Hopkins, Joel Soriano. So let's take a look at that second team here, and then I'll tee up uh, Vin and Tariq. The second team has a couple of Marquette players, and also Godaro, Cam Jones, Baylor Shireman of Creighton. Donovan Klingon's on the all-conference preseason Well, second that just shows you about team. the depth right there, because I know a lot of people had uh, Donovan Klingon on the first team. Um, right. But it, you listen, the, the depth is there. We had Kim English on before, and he talked about Bryce Hopkins transforming his body. Boy, did he in a big time way. I mean, have you seen Bryce walk by? Yeah, he's, I mean, he he's, looks in he's phenomenal lean, shape. He's lean and he's, he's 
got all muscle. Six, so let's seven. play a game. Rapid fire with VP Hoops and Tyreek Turner. I pitched some questions to you this week, and we're going to get some answers right now. If only we had some game show music. So let's start with who's your breakout player in this conference? I'm going Des Clark because he came off a strong finish last year, all freshman team. And this year, he is the guy. This is his team in terms of core returning guys coming back. We heard Sean Miller talk about the improvement, the leadership, and the versatility he brings at 6'6". He can play the one, he can play the two. Switchable defender. I just love everything he brings to this team, and I think he has the potential, as Sean said, to be one of the top players in the league. For me, it's Donovan Kling. You know, he... he he became a common name with Big East fans at, at a young age coming into this league. And, you know, he's, he's going to get healthy, and then he's going to be a guy that at seven foot two NBA scouts are watching. The sleeper team in the Big East. St. John's. I know they're not pick low. I know they're pick five. Do not be surprised if you see Rick Pitino's Red Storm finishing the top few teams. I like that, but I'm going with Providence. I think Providence has something with Kim English brings great energy. He brings a youthful exuberance at 34, 33 years old. And Bryce Hopkins is the guy that I think is, has another layer he can get to at that premier forward spot. And then Devin Carter, probably one of the best on the ball defenders in the Big East. Those two alone are a, a good starting point of leadership for Providence. And I think Kim English is happy to have both those guys. We'll continue our rapid fire in a few moments. We're just talking basketball, Val Ackerman, hey, Tyreek Turner, and Vin Parisi bringing the I knowledge. <laughs> I love talking about basketball with you guys especially. So well, we love having you. Happy media day. Before we go anywhere in the league, Sean Miller, before we started out the interview with him, he said, there's a different vibe in here this year. Is this, how well attended is this compared to other years? And, and we've gotten word that in since reconfiguration, this is a record crowd at Big East Media Day. That's what I'm told, John. I'm told the same thing, and it does feel different. I mean, it doesn't just look different. It's hard to really gauge when you're in a you know building this size. But um, you know, I love we love the we love being here. We love the set dressings. Um, the garden does a wonderful job. They drop the jumbotron down. We have all the branding you know that we would could ever want here. And I just, you know, I've talked to a lot of people. The anticipation is high. And, uh, you know, having you all, I really want to thank all of you because you do a great job with the analysis today and as we head into the year. So I, thanks for that. I, I, I got to tell you, Kamesh, I, what I love most about your, your opening statement when, when you held court at the start here was, yes, on paper, it's, it, it's unbelievable. When you talk about the crop of coaches, the names we have in our league, the amount of top 25 teams there's going to be this year, the reigning national champs, all of this great stuff. But a lot of people forget or weren't covering the league a decade ago when there was that uncertainty, when it changed. And, and, and to see what's taken place the last 10 years must truly be remarkable when you look back at it. It, it really is, Vin. I mean, I um, those early days, frankly, were really hard. I mean, Tariq, you, yeah. you remember what it was like. No one knew what to expect with this new grouping of schools. Um, I know, you know, and I got hired after all the craziness, right? Because it was the, it was sort of history repeating itself a little bit with the Pac-12 because maybe not as, you know, was stretched out over a longer period of time with the Big East schools as they were leaving mostly to go to the ACC, but. Uh, the seven Catholic schools at that time wanted to control their own destiny. They didn't want to be following the football decisions. And so they, they made the bold decision to regroup. And um, I remember, I do remember standing up at Media Day uh, at Chelsea Piers. We didn't know where to go. We didn't want to be in a hotel room. Um, so we, we chose that. And it was actually a pretty setting because it's right on the river. But I, I remember Gus and Bill Raftery being there and no one really being sure. I remember taking inspiration, most of all from, believe it or not, Jay Wright and JT3, John Thompson the yeah. third at that time, yeah. who were kind of our two senior coaches. And they were the guys that had lived through the reconfiguration and were, you know, so eloquent about being basketball schools and being authentic about that. And I, you know, I was sort of new to college sports and I just drew so much energy from them at that time. And um, that year we got four teams in the tournament. 
We didn't know what we were going to get. We got four, and we've never looked back. I really don't believe we've ever looked back. And then the first tournament here, of course, was great crowds. I remember the Creighton fans pouring in to see Doug McDermott, National Player of the Year candidate. And, and we didn't know what to expect with that. And Providence, of course, winning the divine intervention that got Providence, you know, looking up to Dave Gavitt in the, in the heavens, winning their first tournament of the new Big East. So it really, I have so many memories in my head about those early years, uh, what's happened since, working through COVID, you know, seeing the change around us now and really feeling, I, you know, who knows? I don't have a crystal ball, but I really feel like with all of the uncertainty around us, you know, we've got something real here and, and solid and um, authentic and we know who we are. We're not going to try to be something we're not. And, you know, I like our chances very much. I just want to thank you, Val, for your leadership. I don't have a question because we can talk all day. Your leadership and, and the announcement you said at the outset about the uh, beginning talks with the Garden and the Big East, extending that partnership, which we know is so important yeah. to not only Big East, but college basketball, sports in general. So that was a great thing to hear from you and hopefully more good news to come. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you all know the relationship we have with this place. I mean, it's the longest a relationship between a building and a, and a conference in college basketball. Uh, Joel Fisher's been an unbelievable partner. I mean, they make this day possible for us. We sort of have to navigate getting this day because we're dealing with concerts. And I was actually at Billy Joel on Friday night, which was great, by the way. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> see him see him while he lasts. It's incredible. Um, the Knicks, are, of course, start. They open tomorrow. Sure. Um, so we have to, you know, kind of take the date we're given. But, you know, there's just nothing like it. And I've been, we've all been to a lot of games around the country and have seen different arenas. And, and I don't know what it is about this place. The lighting and the crowd and the history and the banners and everything just combines to make it unforgettable. So we want to be here for as long as possible. This is home. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I can tell you the garden feels the same way. And I think Joel would, you know, be uh, upset for me to make that uh, representation. They feel the same way. So we hope to keep it here for as many years as we can. We'll leave with this. Whenever you walk around here on this day, on the media members, the coaches, the players, the people that are associated with this conference, all I see is smiles. People that are happy for the return of college basketball. You said this during your statements, if college basketball has a soul, we are it. You're gonna find it in this league. You'll find it in this league. It's a great Why line. do you say that? Uh, the, the combination, it's the package. It's the history, the rivalries, the coaches, this place, you know, the um, the pedigree. You know, it's sort of, I feel, you know, Dave Gavitt, I knew, I, you know, we throw his name around a lot, but he really set the tone. And uh, it has a little bit to do with being mostly Catholic schools, but mostly it has to do with just the essence. I feel like we're the essence and the players of the, the players. sport and then the great players and the great teams that year after year you know never disappoint their fans and and so it's it's all of that i think rolled up into one and so i call it you know others may call it a package i call it the soul and this former johnny he's always a johnny had a little bit more of a pep in his step walking into the garden <laughs> this morning <laughs> didn't you a little bit a little bit i'm excited that's a, a good way to put it well, Fired up. You know, we, it's, see, the anticipation's running high with good reason. Yes. I think, Tariq, mm -hmm. with good reason. Yeah. And you got to, you know, you got to get things going. But, uh, but we're thrilled about what the energy around what's happening here in New York, Georgetown, the same, yeah. as well as, you know, the other schools that are in the, you know, preseason top 25 and, and then some. I, I just got to throw this in because when Val was telling that story before about Jay and JT's influence, I think back to a, a story that Kevin Willard told. And it was only his third year at Seton Hall when it happened. And he talked about when the coaches got together for their off-season meetings. And he said Jay Wright literally huddled all the head coaches without any of the ADs or presidents around. And was like, a lot of people are downing this. Yeah. We, we got to do this. We got to we got to recruit high level. We got to win non-conference games. We're, we got to do this. We got to do this. And I just... I go back to that, and I it, it can't believe it's been a decade already. Then you're right, and, and a lot of it, too, it was, um, so there was a Jay Wright pep talk at every stage, and he was a great source of counsel to me early, 
But remember, too, the Big East had long been in business with ESPN. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And then here we had, we had, that we had a brand new too. relationship with a brand new network. Yeah. I mean, we launched at the same moment as FS1, maybe a month apart. We launched yeah. July 1 of 2013. FS1 went live on August 1st. And so folks didn't know what that wow. meant. They were new to college basketball. There was a learning curve for them as well. And, uh, and so that was, you know, we had to quiet that down a bit. And Fox has been an amazing partner, as you all know, ever since then. So, um, but, you know, I can't, can't say enough about what Jay did to, to establish that early tone. And then, of course, everything he did to validate the vision and win that national championship in 16 and again in 18 was... Uh, you know, was, was truly one of the most important figures in the history of the conference, for sure. What a decade, year 11, here we come. Val Ackerman, the Big East Commissioner, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you, guys, always Thank a you, pleasure. Thank you, appreciate you. Well, coming up, we have Women's Basketball Media Day, and there's a brand new show this year, brand new podcast. It's Big East in the bonus. Megan Caffrey, Kim Adams, Lisa Carlin and Isis Young are ready to bring you wall to wall Big East women's basketball coverage in a way that you have never Thank seen it much. before. Paul Frischner is with MC and KA to talk more about the Women's Basketball Media Day show and in the bonus. Ladies, I'm ready for in the bonus. You ready for in the bonus? We're so ready for in the bonus. We're ready for Big East women's basketball. Energy's great in the building. Good to see you. Good to see everyone here. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's get the women's show going, right? We've got a lot to look forward to on the women's side this year. We're pumped. Absolutely. Megan Caffrey, Kim Adams, the women's show coming up at the bottom of the hour at 1230. What are some of the things, Kim, I'll start with you, that we can expect here over the next couple hours? Yeah, a ton of excitement. The women's league is coming off of one of the best we've seen in recent years. They sent five teams to the NCAA tournament last year. That was the most since conference realignment. Um, so a lot of key pieces back, most notably Paige Beckers, preseason player of the year for UConn. They are at the top of the preseason poll. Also excited about Creighton, um, a team that reached the Elite Eight two seasons ago, maybe a little disappointed with a first round exit last season. They return four starters, 84% of their scoring. So we got two really tough teams at the top of this league and we'll see who else fills out those standings. Yeah, and there's a lot to look forward to with all of the new faces in the league as well. We have some new head coaches, a lot of transfers. Um, we talked about it on our first episode of In the Bonus and we'll get the chance to talk to our head coaches in the league a little bit more this season or today, but new transfers, new faces. So lots to look forward to. Uh, Megan, what can fans expect on In the Bonus this season? They can expect a blast. It has been, we are one episode in and we had so much fun. Myself, Kim, Ice, Lisa will be joining us as well. It is going to be just a couple of ladies talking hoops, talking about things that are going around on in the Big East, along with women's basketball in general. Casual, fun, grab your cup of coffee, enjoy it weekly with us once the season gets underway. Kim, what are you hoping fans can learn and, and expect from on your end? Yeah, well, first of all, I don't know if there are any uh, programs of this kind, a, a women's basketball, women's college basketball focused podcast. Um, but we're going to have great guests on it every week. We'll have coaches, we'll have players, um, maybe some off the court stuff that we're seeing as we're traveling around to games, some behind the scenes looks. So um, I hope the fans can just get to know our players a little bit better than just what they're seeing on TV or on social media and allow the players to, to share some stories of their own. Well, Kim, Meg, thanks so much for taking a few minutes here. 1230 at the bottom of the hour, the Women's Basketball Media Day show gets rolling. I'm going to send it back over to the desk and the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas, Ed Cooley. Welcome back, everybody. Ed Cooley here, head coach at Georgetown. We're here at Big East Media Day. I'm sitting on the dais with the three musketeers right here. Thank you, Coach. Welcome back. How's everybody doing today? Phenomenal. That would happen. Phenomenal. I mean, just the natural. Fantastic. You guys doing I mean, well? Are you excited to be here? Just you guys excited natural. to be here with, in the best league in America? In with the, the best coaches in America? At the best place to play a championship tournament in America? There's no prompter, ladies and gentlemen. This, this is, is all off natural. the cuff with Freestyle. about 20 seconds preparation. We all set? Yeah, you came ready. Oh, I'm, I'm born ready. Let's go. Let's go. You know, we're doing fantastic because then, while we were off air, 
he said he's buying all of us dinner tonight in the city. So okay, we're really excited. I don't excited. want to go to dinner, and I don't want to go to Wendy's. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. You know, I don't want to go to like you Very know, appreciate it. You know, Chuck and Cheese, and <laughs> I think it's Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese. Well, Chuck my kids are older Chuck now. And yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese, or whatever it may he, be. He was close. He was hey, close. Just, hey, think about where we're sitting right here. Somebody's going to win a Big East championship and cut that net down. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a quick second. And four short months, there's going to be a champion on this floor. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. How, let's the get down. how many Dunkin' Donuts in D.C. compared to Providence? Is how that many Dunkin' Donuts? That affected um, your... Hasn't affected my game. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking Bustelo coffee right now. Oh, it's, so you're not a dunk guy. Uh, you know what? Every now and then, but I think Bustelo got a little Bustelo? bit more kick. Got a little bit more kick seeing that. It. It got a little seeing bit more that. kick. Seeing that. <laughs> Talk you about had, Georgetown. Go ahead. I mean, let, let's jump in. Okay. I mean, you, you you had a dramatic shift in your life. Yes. Right. I mean, where are you now? From a few months ago to now, uh, just just give us a kind of a snapshot of what's going on in your head. How are you feeling about your state of your program, your family? Just bring us up to speed. Well, first and foremost. I want to let you know how grateful I am to be here as a head coach and to be the head coach at Georgetown. It is different. Um, it's exciting. I'll never forget where I came from. We'll always be from the state of Rhode Island, the city of Providence. I'll always love Providence College. And I say that with so much passion. Providence College helped me get here. We did it together with Steve, with Father Shanley, Bob Driscoll, and Father Sicard. It was really, really hard leaving Providence. It was, it was brutal. But at the end of the day, change was in the air. And that's what I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited about the challenge, the challenge of building, the challenge of going somewhere different. I lived in New England for 53 years. And change was in the air for our life, something different. And I think what people are missing is the excitement with Kim English, a dynamic young coach you know, playing at the Amica Mutual Pavilion was incredible. I'm proud to say it was a really small piece of helping that become what it is. But my mindset now is to grow, develop, build this program back to national prominence and to compete for championships right on this floor. Mm. How do you do it? I think you do it um, progress. I think <clears throat> you do it day by day, meeting people, you know, engaging reestablishing, energizing the district, a DMV area, alums, supporters, donors, students that are on campus, getting them to come to games. Everybody's talking about well, over the last 10 years. Well, you know, everybody in their life goes through a tough time, goes through challenges. And that's all this is. And that's what we're built for. This is the fourth organization, one of which was with Al Skinner at Boston College, where we came in in dead last place. Fairfield, dead last place. Mm -hmm. Providence College. I don't know if we were last, but we were close. So I have a lot of experience in rebuilding, reestablishing, reengaging, and I'm excited about this opportunity. But, but, but think about this, and we, we, we go back a bunch of years and with this league from the get-go covering you. You know, you and Dan Hurley have that rivalry yep. from UR, URI and PC. When you go to UConn this year, it's to defend the national champs. Rick Bettino back in the Big Apple at St. John's. The first time you return to Providence, all the hype behind mm -hmm. that game. I mean, just think about all of the buzz that is. I mean, you're at a legendary place where you've always talked about Coach Thompson. Have you? Do you ever remember a season where there's been, been this much juice? And it is, it's not even November yet. It's so many storylines right now in yeah. the Big East. You have three top 10 teams, probably six top 25 teams. You have the Rick Patino story. Yeah. You got the national champions. You got a Final Four team in Creighton that should have been there. Should have been there. 50-50 yeah. call that didn't go our way in the league. You know, when you start thinking about all the storylines that will play out, it's got to be one of the most exciting years mm -hmm. in the last decade, if not the last two decades, in the Big East. Couldn't I couldn't be more excited to be part of it. Can you tell us about your team, Jaden Epps? What is this guy like? 6'2", transfer from Illinois. Uh, what are you hoping to get from him and, and maybe Drew Fielder? Those two guys in particular, are those two of the guys you're going to count on this year? We're going to count on Jaden. Uh, he's dynamic. Looking for him to develop with his leadership, his vocal leadership. I think he's a tough person. I think he's got, a, he, he's got another level in him. Drew Fielder is just scratching the surface. I think he'll be a household name when it's all said and done. Uh, 
you know, uh, Dontre Styles is really coming along. Uh, I think we got some pieces, but it's going to it's it's going to take us some time to get to know one another off the court, on the court, chemistry, synergy, style of play. Got to stay healthy. Um, Supreme Cook. Supreme Cook is is really improving. He, I, he was on my all name great team. Name. Oh, Supreme Cook. Is that hey, not an all name? Let me yes. tell you something about Supreme. I called a few Mac games last year. Uh, he'll surprise I mean, he, was, he was he was he's tough. got one of the deepest voices <laughs> oh, in God. college basketball. That's how John used to come on air, and you know, then the Fox told him to lighten yeah, it up. You know, that's yeah. he's got a great voice. I told him he should have been a singer or like a voiceover guy. Like the brother from the Welcome Temptations. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. I'm Supreme Cook. <laughs> you can broadcast. You could do a trailer for a summer film. You could coach. You could sing. I've been working on my singing. I'm, I'm going to go on uh, America's Got Talent. I'm gonna go on. Uh, I don't know if I want to hear that. <laughs> I got. I got a serious question. Okay, serious question. Here we go. Here we Rick, go. Rick Rick Pitino. Yes. Rick Pitino talks about the fact that like seven or eight nights a month, he feels like he's a politician with the with the schmooze and the yep. wine and dine and the fundraising, the NIL world. You've always been known as one of the better recruiters nationally. How, how has this dynamic changed it's, with this? It has been. I think we've been on a job 215, 217 days somewhere in there. It's 14 like. to 17 hours a day. Yeah. I feel like I'm running for Congress, House Speaker, President, District Manager, you know, Wendy's Manager, Burger King. I, 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 engaging, friend raising, fundraising, recruiting, yeah. moving, selling your family in. It's been a change, but it's a challenge. And I'm so excited about the opportunity. I'm even more excited about this year's Big East, Big East teams. This should be a fun year nationally in the Big East. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you in the Georgetown Hoyas take the floor on November the 7th, 7 Eastern time against LeMoyne. That's on FS2. Ed Cooley, thanks for taking the time. Hi, guys. Appreciate Thank you, it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Paul Frischner has a Hoya. Joined now by Jaden Epps. And, Jaden, I want to ask you first, what is it like playing for Ed Cooley in this Georgetown team? Um, it's great. Uh, Coach Cooley, uh, he brings so much energy. Uh, he gives us all confidence on playing, in the, playing on the court. Um, and I've always wanted to play for him. Um, you know, I, I was recently committed to him at Providence. Um, so coming to Georgetown to play for him, um, it's like a dream come true for me. Why did you want to play for him so badly? Um, Coach Cooley, I, I love him and, for, and what he stands for. Um, we also built a great relationship. Um, he, he's been recruiting me ever since uh, my, my begin the beginning of my high school career. So um, we built a great relationship. Um, he's like, he, I built one a relationship with him like uh, I've never built with any other head coach. So um, that's the reason that I always wanted to play for him. What are some of the things that you've learned so far through this offseason about what this Georgetown team will be this year? Um, all, all summer we've been working hard on um, just trying to come together um, because we're all from different um, uh, different teams. So uh, we, we all just been trying to come together, uh, bring all where we've been at and bring all our skills to come together and be as one so we can win games. So uh, I feel like it's going to be an exciting year for us. What are you expecting out of yourself personally this year? What kind of goals are you setting to try and achieve? Um, the, the main goals I set personally for me is just do whatever I have to do to help my team win. Uh, uh, Georgetown ha hasn't had success um, in, in the past, and um, that's why Coach brought us all here to um, help us um, have success now, and, uh, bring our talents, and, 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 help, and help them get some wins. Well, Jaden, best of luck this year, and, and good luck with everything that you're going to do here in a Georgetown uniform. Thank you. Appreciate it. John, back to you. Paul, and great job by Paul Frischner all throughout the day. John Fanta, Vin Parisi, Tariq Turner with you at Madison Square Garden. Hey, our day of coverage is not done. On X, on YouTube, on Flow, you can watch Big East Women's Basketball Media Day coverage with Megan, Kim, Isis, and Lisa. That's coming your way in just minutes after we wrap up. So, gentlemen, it's time for, it's October, but it's time for the big overarching predictions here, all right? Who will, in your mind, end up winning Big East Player of the Year this year? Bryce Hopkins, Providence. You know, I'm going to go with, um, I think I'm going to go with Donovan Klingon. I just feel like it's his time. I do. It feels like you? it absolutely could be. That's a. Hmm. I think it's a one-way relationship. Justin Moore, Villanova. Ooh, Ooh, God, that'd be an awesome interesting. story nationally. Justin Moore reclaims his throne is an All-American, 
shows everybody that picking Villanova fourth was low. I understand why they're fourth. I would not be surprised at all if we see vintage Moore, vintage Eric Dixon, will Villanova to a championship Saturday night inside this building okay. 144 nights from now. Okay. You've been counting? Yes. Yeah. Big East regular season. So that's the gauntlet. Who do you think will end up winning the regular season in this league? Creighton. I think Colt Brenner is the most imposing defensive force in the country. We talked earlier about the trio that McDermott has. They have experience coming back shooting. Uh, I think it's going to be close standings-wise. Trey Alexander's a pro. Uh, I think Creighton Blue Jays win the regular season. I'm going Marquette, and I know that's the easy pick, and it's kind of like a copy and paste year for them roster-wise. But I, you know, after hearing Shaka talk, uh, they have another year together. That three-guard trio of Cam Jones, Kolick, and Stevie Mitchell, I mean, that right there is, is really intriguing to me. And then you take the shooting of Joplin, and, you know, I just love the fact that they have so many experienced guys that know what it's like. And I don't think you can underestimate that. I think they cut down the nets again. Creighton and Marquette are going to meet in the last weekend of December, December 30th. The game is on CBS National. That is going to be a heck of a holiday hoops type of game in Milwaukee when those two teams meet. I've got Creighton. But I, I lean Creighton. I have Creighton as my regular season winner. Here we but, go. But either I know what you're going to say. But go either ahead. UConn or St. John's, the two MSG fan bases that are going to be rocking that week, well, are going to win the conference tournament is my call. The great thing about this league, as we all know, is that a team that's playing in November, December can be totally different in February. Yep. And we saw with UConn early, that they were hitting some kind of hurdles, and then they just took off. And I think, to your point, St. John's certainly is a team that I could see doing that, UConn for sure, and a host of others. Well, that's what makes this league well, so good. Well, think about it. Those two fan bases, what, what, what they do to this building when they're rocking. And then you got two guys that get their teams to play their best basketball, you know, the last two, three weeks of the season. I like the UConn pick. UConn was disappointed in how last year went in the Big East. All their losses, folks, mm -hmm. came to conference opponents. All eight losses came to Big East teams. They didn't lose to a non-conference team. They were unbeaten in non-conference play, obviously rolled in the NCAA tournament. So I, I like the UConn pick. We'll see if Rick Pitino, I, not we'll see, he's going to light this place on fire. November 13th when Michigan comes in here, mm -hmm. 6.30 Eastern Time, FS1. This place is going to be absolutely shaking. This place will be rocking throughout the year because of the Patino effect. I'm going to give you a hot take, though, and mm. then I want to hear yours. I have a gut feeling there's a coach in this league who I think feels very doubted, but had a different demeanor than I saw last year from him. And I think he's got some talent. If they stay healthy, we're going to walk in here on Big E semifinal Friday night and out of nowhere, but I will not be shocked, Shaheen Holloway will have one of the last four teams in the Big East tournament. Interesting. I just Interesting. have a gut feeling that Kadari Richmond does break out and Seton Hall ends up in the semifinals. I'm not saying they win the Big yeah. East tournament. I just think there's something there. Well, and not to sound cliche, I should cut you off, Tariq, but it, Tariq and I talk about this every year. The beauty of this league and conference and tournament is there's always one or two big storylines when it's Big East tournament week in March that we we didn't even touch on yeah. for five seconds at media day there here right. in October. And then that's the fun part about this thing playing out. Yeah, and Kyle Neptune, to your point, this is his second year, and he's got a totally different team. I think he's more balanced. I think he's more comfortable in his role as a second-year head coach at Villanova, and he's got his two core guys. You mentioned it, Justin Moore and Eric Dixon. It would not surprise me if they're playing in the semifinals of the Big East tournament. There's a lot of scenarios that we can go through. That's what makes this conference so great. Yeah. Buckle up. Grab your popcorn. Big East basketball is and Congratulations and on the wedding. Oh, thank you very much, Tom. You look like a different man. <laughs> I congrats appreciate again. that. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping a little bit easier at night after all the cocktail hour yeah. planning. And hey, that was well executed. You had okay. some summer. Phenomenal. Was that executed great all right? App, great apps. Did you have the bacon wrap shred? Yeah, I did. The Brajute was phenomenal. He doubled up on that. I heard that was phenomenal, by the way. The yes. Brajute was phenomenal. Yeah. You guys are phenomenal. For Paul Frischner, for Tyreek Turner, for Vin Parisi, for Scott Hex, for Daniel Lemoyne, for Kevin Brownsman, for Sam Rubinoff, for Jason Dudley, for our entire crew. I'm John Fanta saying so long for now from Madison Square Garden.
144 nights from now, we will crown a champion in this building. Today, we began the journey. Thanks for watching Big East Men's Basketball Media Day.